Welcome to our 20th weekly call. If you have questions, please write them down right beside the video there in YouTube. And I promise you I'll answer every single question and I'll stay on this call forever until all questions have been answered. Uh, if this is your first time coming to the call, welcome. If this is your second, third, or 20th time, welcome back. This will be a lot of fun. And I hope you like this new setup that I've got here. Uh, I'm trying to uh, make the video resolution a lot better. So what you're watching right now is uh, 1080p. That's nerd talk for better resolution. I've got a 4K camera as well. I'll try that out another time. Uh, but I've got this cool little uh, editorial uh, newsroom type desktop set up here. And uh, uh, I just want to make this as, as helpful and as value added to you as I possibly can. So again, please write down your questions and let's begin. Sorry, that was my first mess up of the year. Um, I was on mute there, but I think you can all hear me now. Sorry about that. Um, so Wrigley, let me know if there's any issues with that with the call here. Good morning, and I'll start with your questions right now. Happy New Year, by the way. All right, so the first question is from Ed. Um, Ed is asking, um, actually, Wrigley's calling me right now. No, I got the idea, we're good, sorry. All right, um, Ed is saying Apple is taking a hit and will surpass its 52-week low. Uh, what are some criteria that you look for when buying stocks uh, at its low point? I'm fo following the old mantra of sell high and, and buy low. Okay, so uh, I'm, I'm a very long-term investor. I love to look at the fundamentals first, uh, the valuation second, and the technicals last. However, what you can look for if you're technical mind, technically minded uh, is a bottom in the stock by seeing if it's holding, and this is for all stocks, not just Apple, see if it's holding onto that 50-day moving average line or 200-day moving average line, or if there's a channel to see if it has broken support or not. I don't wanna go into too much details on technical analysis. You can go to my YouTube vlog and just do a search on technical analysis for a 15 minute lecture on that. But I would look to see that the stock has actually bottomed technically speaking. Otherwise what happens is you're catching a falling knife. Uh, and I always love to buy stocks when everybody else is panicking. That goes for all asset classes uh, in, in general. Um, so, um, Wrigley just sent me a message saying no audio. I think there's audio. Good to go now on sound, somebody said. Okay, great. Okay, thank you for that. <laughs> I can hear you. <laughs> All right, great. Um, so anyway, th that's a little bit about technical analysis. Uh, again, focus on fundamentals first, valuation second, technicals last, if you want to look at technicals at all. Okay, great. Um, next question is from, uh, from Joe. Uh, Joe, good morning. Uh, I hope you had a nice vacation. Thank you. Likewise. Uh, morning, uh, Avi Pro. How are you? Um, you're from Sweden, I think you mentioned, right? Cool. Okay. Lamarck's got a question. Hi, Chris. A few hours ago, I took your course about the job interview resume and LinkedIn. Just wanted to ask. I tried Fiverr because I want to sell services, but here's one question. What should you do if there are people who offer the same service who are more qualified uh, but and have a, a very intimidating resume? Um, so I, I don't think it's ever enough to just send in your resume uh, to, to get a job because what happens is everybody um, advertises online for resumes and you send in your, your, your resume in one job application online, you're one of thousands. A better way to do it, and don't get intimidated by people that have resumes that you think look better than yours. A better way to do it is to network aggressively. And you can go to my website and download my networking book, which will teach you everything you need to know about networking. And this isn't just for getting a job, but for getting customers too. So what I want you to do, Lamarck, is I want you to meet with people at that company by applying the networking principles uh, on my website. Uh, it's haroonventures.com. I've mentioned it in previous weeks as well. Go through that entire book 
uh, or the very last section of that course you're taking right now, the Complete Job LinkedIn and Networking course. Apply the principles, get uh, your, your networking meetings or informational meetings, and I promise you it doesn't matter if somebody else's resume appears to look better than yours. You will get the job if you network enough, I promise you. Now, the issue is uh, a lot of people don't like to network because it feels uncomfortable. It's, if I told you that if you set up informational meetings with 10 people at companies you wanted to work at and all of them met with you but said there's no opportunity for you here, there's no jobs, but by the 11th time they said, yes, would you do it? Of course you would. Of course you would. So please try at least 10 times. And I promise you, if you network enough uh, in life, uh, you will get you what you want. All right. So um, next question I've got is uh, from Kardec. Uh, Good morning. Happy New Year to you too. Uh, my question is how to start preparing for job interviews. So I, I think the best thing to do is to, uh, and I have a course on this called the Complete Job Course, uh, but what I recommend is learning everything you can about the company from, of course, their website, uh, search online, read various articles. You can even go to glassdoor.com, go to LinkedIn and find out what the profiles of are, are of the people that work there. And when you go to LinkedIn and you see if people are wearing a suit in their profile images for that company, then wear a suit to the interview. If they're wearing um, something like this, whatever, uh, then, then just wear casual, okay? And what you should also do is, uh, I want you to, and it's hard for me to answer this uh, in, in a short amount of time because I have a course called the Complete Job Course that teaches you everything about this, but I want you to write down, you know, 50 questions you think they could ask you in an interview. And I also want you to think about all of your, your weaknesses, perceived weaknesses, and I want you to turn them into strengths when you answer those questions. And if you want more details on that, please let me know. And then I want you to record yourself uh, like I'm doing right here. You can use your iPhone or Android handset. Record yourself answering questions as well. And make sure you don't sound too monotone. Make sure you don't sound too arrogant. Um, keep your, your voice fluctuation the right amount, if you know what I mean. Um, you might need to change the speed in which you're speaking as well. I'm slowing down a bit now too. Sorry, sometimes people complain I, I talk a little bit too quickly. Um, anyway, so so hopefully that that's helpful guidance for you. Uh, again, you can take my course called the Complete Job Course um, and it's um, it, it'll teach you everything you need to know. And there's a, a 30 day money back guarantee as well with all my courses. So just please sign up for that course, okay? Next question is, um, hi, Chris, can I ask, be, besides the actions of the Fed, what else moves the interest rates? And which of these factors do you think are most important? Thank you. Okay, yeah. So the, the Federal Reserve um, is is the, uh, the governing uh, body in the United States that controls interest rates, makes them go up or down. In other countries, it's called something different. In Europe, it's the European Central Bank or ECB. In Canada, it's um, uh, the Bank of Canada. And in Japan, it's the Ministry of Finance, um, and that's, that sort of thing. So, and Fujimori-san, I hope you're on the call with us this week. But what happens is this, what drives interest rates up um, or, or in, is, is inflation. So if the price for all food items, you like that green screen? <laughs> if the price of all food items, drinks, whatever, uh, went up materially because there's too much demand, meaning the economy is doing extraordinarily well, then what the government will do is in order to decrease the prices of these items, meaning to bring inflation uh, in check, the government will actually increase interest rates. And it's a smart thing to do because governments want to have a little bit of dry powder, so to speak, um, so that when the economy is not doing well, they can jumpstart it by, uh, by cutting interest rates. Uh, and you can go to my, my vlog, uh, and, and there's a, a, a vlog I, I, I created called uh, The Idiot's Guides to Interest Rates as Taught by an Idiot, uh, and that will explain in more details. Thank you. All right, let's see what else I got here. All right, so Rohit, hey Rohit, how are you? Um, Rohit is asking, um, how did I get a, a job at, at Goldman Sachs? Um, what questions did they ask you at the interview? And would you have gotten the job without being a Columbia University student? Thanks. Okay. That's a great question. So 
uh, I did my MBA. I graduated in 2000, seems like years ago. And I tell people only do an MBA, only go to MBA school. If you tried networking and you can't get a job or you can't change careers, and I didn't know much about networking uh, back in the late 90s. Uh, I've written a book on it since, which you all know of. Um, but um, Columbia helped me get into Goldman, but I would have tried to network materially uh, using the principles I teach in my courses rather than spending all that money on, on business school. So the questions uh, that uh, they asked me um, when I was interviewing at, at Goldman were tough were tough. Uh, and I wrote down at that time over 100 questions they could possibly ask me. And what I did was I, I actually recorded it. Um, I, I carried a, a little recorder with me. Um, we didn't have iPhones back then. And I would record myself answering those questions. And I would answer those questions in such a way that by the time I completed those answers, I knew what they were going to ask me next. And so the questions I, uh, that I prepared for, which they asked, include what are your weaknesses, um, you know, what's your favorite stock, uh, that sort of thing. And I'll tell you what they asked me. It was, it was interesting. Um, and, and I remember it was really, I was intimidated by a couple of the people uh, interviewing me. Um, and, and I think they were just putting an act on because I got to know them later when I, when I eventually got the job at Goldman and they were very, very nice. Um, but you have to go through 40 interviews to get in there sometimes. And one thing I'll say about Goldman Sachs is they don't hire the smartest people. That's how I got in. Uh, but they hire people that just get along, right? And, and they want to make sure it's a cultural fit. And the same thing should be said about most great companies as well, because one bad apple spoils a whole darn bunch, which I vlogged about um, yesterday. But uh, I, the questions that they will ask you in general, and this goes for everybody interviewing for a finance job or most jobs, is one tactic they use with me is they start high level and they drill down. So they asked me at that time, uh, what markets do you cover or follow in Europe? Uh, and, and I said, uh, the, the DAX, uh, the CAC 40, that's uh, France, uh, the FTSE, et cetera. Then they asked me, uh, in Germany, what stock, name one stock you're following. And at the time, I, I said uh, Daimler Chrysler. And then they said, well, who's the CEO of Daimler Chrysler? And I said, Jürgen Schrempp. And then they asked me, well, what's the valuation on Daimler Chrysler? And I said, I don't know, but I'll find out and I'll get back to you. You see what happened there? They're drilling down. They're drilling down until you can't answer questions anymore. And they want to see if, if you're, you're, you're BSing uh, or, or not. Um, and so... By saying, I don't know, but I, I'll find out, it shows that you're proactive, you're humble, you're not a, a BSer at all. And then in the follow-up email later that day, uh, I, I said, Aaron, uh, very nice meeting with you. I enjoyed our conversation regarding your question on the valuation for Daimler Chrysler. The price earnings ratio is blah, 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 whatever, that sort of thing. Okay. And what, what I've been doing lately is in my complete job course, I have a number of templates that I ask you and I help you to, to complete, to bring to your interviews, to help the interviewer. And I promise you, if you apply the methodologies in that course, you will get any job you want. You will get any job you want, I promise you, because people don't bring exhibits to interviews. They really should. They really should. And, and you'll be so ready after taking my course that by the time you go to the interviews, you'll, you'll actually enjoy them. It'll, it'll, it'll be fun for you because you're so ready. Okay. Okay. All right. Um, Ed, Ed is saying Napa question mark. So uh, in, in that opening video, uh, I, I recorded that from. Uh, yeah, you're right. It's, it, no, it, it looked like Napa Valley. It wasn't. Um, it was actually Carmel. Uh, so Napa Valley is, as we all know, it's wine country, which is an hour and a half north of here. Carmel's about an hour uh, south of here. Uh, but I was walking through a vineyard, which, which was pretty nice. OK. All right. Um, next question I've, I've got here is, hold on a second. Okay, great. Uh, and then Wrigley, uh, who works with me, just just ping me if there's there's issues, please, with sound or, or, or audio. Got to stay in the middle of the frame here. <laughs> All right. So, um, yeah, happy near to you, Lamarck and Siddharth as well. Thank you. Uh, and then I've got a question. Um, could I email you my CV to get feedback? It would be great. Help seeing you. Uh, as you've worked in the industry, uh, I'm trying to get into. Yeah, you can do it, um, but you have to email me right now, um, and you have to email it to my, uh, my, my my Gmail account, uh, and then 
I, I want to discuss it in front of everybody uh, on this webcast. Uh, if you're comfortable with that, then please send it. Uh, I'd be I'd be happy to help you out that way. And um, there was a guy who asked me to review his business model two weeks ago, or maybe it was last week, uh, and that was a lot of fun. And I'm happy to do that as well. If you have a website for your company. Uh, and you want me to provide my, my humble feedback, um, l- let me know and I'll, I'll, I'll do that. Let me just adjust the screen a bit so I'm centered. Good. All right. All right. Next question is from Rohit. I watched all the movies you recommended. Please recommend new movies. Thank you. Um, gosh, you know, uh, from a business perspective, um, you saw Tucker as well, right? A Man in His Dream. Um, I, I, I can't really... I can't think of any at this point, but when I do, I'll, I'll provide them to you. I'm a baseball fan, Rohit. I, I'm not sure if you are, uh, but I, I've, I've watched every baseball movie there is. Uh, Field of Dreams is my favorite. Um, anyway, so I'll think of some more and come up with them. Thank you. All right, Joel's got a, a question. Uh, good evening from the Philippines. Hey, Joel, how are you? Um, just subscribe to your, your MBA course on Udemy. Thanks for the effort you put into it. Thank you. I appreciate that. Thank you. All right, Lamarck's got a question. Does the fundamental analysis include making a financial model? It does. But if you're going, if you're not um, that well versed in finance or accounting, um, then you don't have to make a model. But just go to my one pager and I'll show you what that means. Actually, what if you want, what, what you can do is, um, let me see if I can. I'll go to, actually, give me one second. I'm, I'm going to try to go to a, a screen capture here, uh, and, and I'm going to show you what it looks like. I just set up new equipment here. Sorry. <laughs> that's that's mini me, by the way. All right. So let's go together, and I'm going to show you that one page right up. All right. Let's do this. All right. So I'll go here. And if you go to my uh, uh, my website, uh, Haroon uh, Ventures or Haroon Education Ventures, same thing, uh, dot com, then you go to uh, Template. Here we go. And here's um, here's the template I was referring to. And so this is in PowerPoint format. Uh, it'll it'll open up with Keynote and, and other document readers as well. And what you do is uh, is is this. You, you find it in the Finder first, and then you double click it. There you go. It's coming. So this blank template is for you to use uh, to fill in before your, your your interviews. Here it is. Here. Okay. I apologize. It took so long to open. And so there's three parts to it. There's fundamentals, technicals, and, and valuation. And you can complete all of this or take my complete uh, financial analyst uh, course, which will help you. Again, there's a, a money back guarantee always on, on those things. Uh, but I'll show you actually an example of, of that one completed. So here's an example on, on NetSuite. Okay. And I apologize, a little hard to read here. I'll, I'll zoom out. You can go to that website as well, haroonventures.com slash template and download this. Uh, and this is the template I filled in. As you can tell, I deleted technicals. Uh, but when it com- came to, to, to valuation, I included kind of a mini model here um, on, on, uh, on NetSuite. And I forecast revenue each year, see here, uh, and then operating margin as well, uh, and then EPS and price earnings. And I listed my assumptions there. So it wasn't a full model, uh, but it was, it was good enough. And let, let me just show you, um, let me show you one more while we're here. Is it here? I think I have to go back. Sorry. Here we go. Good. All right. Uh, and here's another one on, on eBay. And this is publicly available. You can get it as well. Uh, and on this one, um, I didn't list anything really when it came to, to earnings estimates, except for here, revenue and EPS estimates at the bottom. So it's kind of like a mini model. And you can take my courses to, to understand how, how to make a financial model as well. All right, let me go back now to uh, Wirecast. All right, hold on one second. Let me get big again. There I am. All right, great. And, and let me get rid of that that uh, background. And we'll throw in some nice poppies in the background. How's that? All right, great. All right, next question here. All right. So uh, Rohit has a question, um, how to stop worrying about the little things and being paranoid. Um, also, due to this, um, okay, people micromanaging. Not, okay, so there's a couple of questions there. So uh, the first thing I'll mention, uh, so Rohit, there's actually a book you can read uh, by Dale Carnegie called um, um, How to Stop Worrying and Start Living. And I also recommend 
um, in, in addition to reading that book, uh, search for quotes. There's wonderful quotes out there. Winston Churchill had a great one on worrying. I love quotes. He said, I once knew a man who on his deathbed talked about all the worries he had in his life that he thought about, none of which came true. So almost everything that you worry about never comes true. And so I feel like we're wasting our time uh, at, you know, worrying about things we can't control. And so I tend to focus on only what I can control. And uh, for me personally, um, this is not a religious call, but I'm fully transparent. Um, I, I always tell myself and I'm worried, uh, don't worry because uh, God already knows what's going to happen. And, and that gives me peace of mind. Um, and then you also get a bit, you get a bit older um, like me, and you just stop, you stop caring what people think about you, okay? Um, and the, the second you really, really worry about what people think about you is the second that your, your life goes into, into a spiral because you're, you're ultimately trying to live your life for other people and please other people. And how can you focus on being happy if all you care about or all we care about, I should say, not singling you out, Rohit, but all we care about is what people think of us. Okay, so the earlier you learn to not give a damn what other people think about you, the more happy you'll be. Okay, the more happy you'll be. And I'm not telling you to be rude or disingenuous at all. Just don't care what people think of you. And you'll do better. Even, Lamarck, you'll, you'll do better in, in interviews too. Uh, somebody asked a question about interviews. Um, if you don't care what they think about you as much. Uh, and what I mean by this is this. And I'll give an example of dating, and I should not be giving dating advice because I sucked at it. Christine's way out of my league. And I'll give you a, an example of interviewing as well. So let me kick it off with the interviewing. So do you remember when you went to just a ton of interviews um, and you you were, you were didn't get the job and, and you kept trying really hard and eventually you went to a job interview and you're like, I just don't care. I don't, I don't care anymore. And what happened was you aced that interview. And the reason you aced that interview is because you were so relaxed. Not, you weren't rude uh, or disingenuous. You just relaxed, you know, you, and you just, you talk about things you enjoy talking about. Like, like talk about sports. Sports, by the way, is great boardroom talk. Uh, I don't care where you're from in the world. Everybody loves a sport that you love. So chit chat like that. And when I was relaxed uh, in, in my interviews in the past, I, I, I did really well because I told myself, I don't care if I get this job. And the same thing when it comes to dating. Like I remember when I first started dating Christine, it was a disaster. We go out on dates and I wasn't sure how to act. I was, I was nervous, right? And then eventually I was like, I just don't care. I'm going to be myself. And the, the date worked out really well. Okay. So anyway, hopefully that's, uh, that, that, that's helpful. Give me one second. I'm going to check just to focus on this guy here. That's fine. Okay. All right. So, all right. Next up is, um, all right, micromanaging. Yeah, the worst thing you can possibly do is micromanage somebody. If they're a brand new employee, it's okay initially uh, to, to manage them a little bit more closely. Um, but I, I think that micromanaging destroys the trust that, um, that your employees have in you. Um, so the, the only way to micromanage, the only reason to do so is if you have an employee that's just not doing that well or is so new uh, that they've never worked before. If that's the case and you're managing people, I'll give you a simple tip. What you do is this. Ask the person you're managing at the end of every day to send you an email with three components. Number one, what did you accomplish today? Number two, what do you want to accomplish tomorrow? And number three, issues or questions. That's it. Those three things in one email. And then you can answer and give feedback or guidance. Um, but um, there's nothing worse than being micromanager. It really destroys your, your, um, uh, your morale completely. All right, cool. Uh, and then you wrote here, not delegating enough. So the sooner you learn to delegate, um, the more successful you'll become because you can't just become a, a rock star in business or any aspect of your life alone. You're going to have to have people help you out. And delegating is a lot cheaper than it used to be because you can outsource a lot of stuff online as well. Okay, so I'm looking at a website called Upwork right now for somebody to help me to do some video editing, that sort of thing. And I have an entire course on how to delegate uh, there, there's a money-back guarantee as always. Uh, take that if, if you want. It's a short course. It's an hour and a half. 
uh, but but I think it's helpful. Okay, next question um, I've got. And Rohit, if that didn't answer your question, uh, please please let me know. Thank you. All right, and, and I put up all my my uh, my my sound things here. Um, I, I gotta show you. Let me see if I can show you. Hold, hold on one second here. I'm gonna I'm gonna show you all. Um, hold on one second. I want to show you what I did here. All right, so I've, I've got another lens here uh, as well. Let me let me just give it to you there. Uh, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to scale out. And then I'm going to ask for your feedback because um, I, I've got several several lenses today. Uh, and I don't know which one's good and, and which which one's not. Here it is here. Okay, great. So so what I did was, um, and I'm actually going to get up for, for this one here. And um, oh, I'll let you re read my shirt too. Got to stay in frame though, right? So... Dream it, believe it, achieve it. I love it. And Christine and the kids for Christmas, they, they got me a bunch of t-shirts. So I, I'm going to show you what I, what I did here. So I, I put these panels up here and they look like this. It's, it's just to, to help you um, get rid of uh, out, outdoors noise. Because remember every Thursday, for those of you that have been with me these past 20 weeks, my neighbor always cuts his lawn. Uh, and then what, what I also did was, was I put them um, on this side here. Um, and, and I painted this for my green screen as well, uh, and I'm trying to expand the green screen uh, as well. And and this here is is just to hold my my blue yeti as well, which is right inside of there. So anyway, and and right there, I'm trying to make the the backlit pop work a little bit better, um, so green screen works a bit better. So let me let me go back now. And that was just kind of a a, a little uh, scene behind the scenes there. All right, hold on one second. All right, sorry about this, guys. There you go, that's good. All right, I'm back, I'm back. And and I've got two cameras. And later on, I'm gonna ask y'all for feedback, please, uh, on, on those two All right, uh, bonus points, what city is that? I've used it in the past. Uh, I'm just trying to keep it real here. Okay, so what's my take on parenting in the digital world? Uh, how do you remain balanced uh, as well as helping manage the activities of, of young children? So I'm a little bit different from other parents. and. What I'm going to say right now is 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 kind of controversial. Um, I, I think that I think that video games are good for kids in moderation. and And I say that because kids are it's a little bit different now because the way that kids socialize with each other is using video games. Of course, I don't let them play you know really, really bad games like Red Dead Revolver Two, which I'm hooked on right now, Red Dead Redemption Two. It's so good, by the way. Made by the owners of GTA, by the way. Um, but no, I, I let my kids play a little bit every day because they socialize using Fortnite with their friends. That's just how they socialize. And not letting your kids play a little bit of video games uh, or, or use a little bit of technology is hurting them. Because in, in, in the future, obviously, this stuff is going to be much more relevant uh, than, than it is today. And trying to make our kids live the way we lived is not fair. You know, I, I won't make my kids go to a library. You know, at libraries, when I was a kid, I had to pay 25 cents to use a microfiche to print out articles. They can just use Wikipedia or Google, that sort of thing. And so I think technology is good for kids. What we do, though, is, is this. When we go out to dinner, um, when we go to dinner, um, all of us have to put these things down on the table and we stack them. Uh, and that way we can, we can spend, spend more time with each, with each other. So I got distracted there. These things are bad sometimes. Um, I also have something called uh, Life 360, uh, where I can kind of track my kids and whatnot, which, which is great. It's just, it's, it's a good thing. And it's interesting because the number of, of abductions actually has gone down a lot because of technology, because of GPS. And so I, I think that, um, you know, if, if you can help your kids buy these things or, or encourage them to buy them, whatever, I think that's a good thing. Um, and so I, I actually think that, that technology is very good for them. Uh, but I am mindful of, of a little things, little things too. Like when, when my kids text, um, and when you text, you, everyone's posture is going to be horrific if we're not careful. And mine's kind of getting a little bit bad. Pretend you have a grapefruit uh, or, or, a, or, or, a, or a cricket ball or something under your chin. And that will keep you upright, especially with your kids, because when they're developing, if they become kind of hunched over or whatever, when they're growing, it's tough to reverse that later in life. Um, so I, I think that I think it's actually good for kids uh, to, to use technology. And today's vlog, um, which is going to automatically be released at 11 a.m. on my time, 
um, talks about why we all need to have younger mentors. We need to be mentored by younger people. Um, and I, I won't ruin it for you, but I'll just mention two quick things from that. Number one, uh, kids are much more positive uh, than older generation because they don't, you know, I remember as a kid, I'd always be around the TV. My parents would be watching 60 Minutes uh, and I'd hear all the negative things in the world. You know, my, my kids and most kids don't watch TV anymore. They, sometimes they just go to the room by themselves or outside, whatever, and they'll watch YouTube. And YouTube's very positive. And, and I know it seems crazy. Like a lot of these successful YouTubers don't really teach them anything. They're just happy-go-lucky people doing crazy things. Well, that's actually not bad because it's... It, it, it fosters a positive attitude, right? So younger people aren't as negative as older people because younger people don't watch the news. Now, it's important to be up to date on global issues that are important and to vote and all that stuff. But I love the younger generation, how they pick their own media uh, and they kind of have their own digital uh, sound or blocking room technology to, to block out or, or, to, or to Heisman all the negative stuff out there in the world. So anyway... Um, that's, that's what I have to say about that. Sorry if I rambled on with, with that answer, but um, that, that's, that's what I say uh, with, with my kids when it comes to tech, technology. But I will say also uh, we have screen time and, and, and we kind of, we try to limit certain things. And of course I, I, I block out uh, rated M stuff and R stuff for, for my youngest one and, and, and the others as well. Um, but they're going to find it anyway. I mean, it's, it's, you, you try to protect your kids as much as you can, but just, we have to realize that they're going to get access to whatever that stuff is somehow, you know, it's okay. I'll talk about people I knew growing up when they, they used to go into variety stores or, or bookstores or whatever it was. And there were certain magazines up high uh, they might have, I don't know, gotten Sports Illustrated and put the other magazine inside. They, they can still get access to it. I had a lot of tall friends growing up that did that, not me. Okay. <laughs> All right. Um, so let's see. Uh, oh, good morning, Fat Shadow. Thank you. Uh, and, and Stephen here is saying, um, I'm so sorry. I lost my place. Here I am. How do I deal with toxic individuals who malign you to coworkers, managers, uh, et cetera? Stephen, you wrote about this um, on on my, uh, my my vlog on this topic yesterday, uh, and I was about to respond. I just didn't know how to do it. Um, I'm going to go, actually, if you don't mind, um, I'm going to go to your comment, and we're going to read it together because I, I didn't really understand how best to answer it. So hold on one second. I'm going to go here, and I'm going to make myself small in the corner again, uh, and then we're going to go there. And, and I'm doing this because I, I feel bad because I didn't answer it. So let's go to YouTube, and then we'll go to, here we go, down here. All right. Uh, and, um, and, and, and I'll answer your question here. So your, your question was right here, right? Yeah, 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 I remember now. All right, let me, there's no sound on there. Good. All right, uh, and then you had a you had a comment. Oh, here it is there. Okay, and by the way, if anybody is is curious how how I made this, I just did the green screen here, and and I did a little uh, a duplication here. I just turned myself upside down, and then I opacity outed it. It's not perfect, as you can tell there, uh, but I actually did this one in in uh, in in 4K. If you have a 4K monitor, that that will show up. Oh my God, I talk a lot. Okay, so. <laughs> So Steve is saying, nice, but it's not uncommon for such toxic individuals to malign you to your coworkers and or superiors, which on account of salience bias can delay or prevent advancement if one seeks to uh, advance or grow in the company. The, uh, the I understand approach doesn't, doesn't work in that situation. Yeah, I, I, I read that, Stephen, and, and I, didn't, I didn't fully understand um, your, your question there. That's, that's why I didn't answer it, because I usually answer every single question. Um, so let me, I'm trying to think of how best to, to answer it because I'm trying to see if I even understand the question, uh, which, which is my fault, not yours. Sorry. All right. Um, let me think about this. So I, I, I don't fully understand, Stephen, but, but here's what I'll do. I'll answer it a certain way. How do I deal with people at work um, who, and maybe it's just, I don't know what the word malign means. Is that a line or something? This is my, my ignorance, uh, Stephen, please. Let me go here and just do a search on, on the word malign. Evil. Okay, malevolence. Okay. How do you deal with uh, toxic people 
who evilly align you to coworkers and managers. Okay, well, I would just say just, you know, keep your, your, your Lady Gaga poker face on always. Uh, don't show your cards. Uh, and then just don't divulge too much. You know, don't, don't talk that much. Um, and, and if you do, just kind of, you know, say, don't agree or disagree. Just say, I understand, as I mentioned before. And I know you disagree with that. So, Steve, if I can ask you, please just provide a little bit more uh, clarity on this. Again, I'm sorry I don't understand all, all the words in my vocab. It's not that, that great. Uh, but I don't want to leave you hanging. I want to help you out there. Thank you. All right. Next question I've got is, what is the one thing which you will recommend uh, to a newly graduated computer engineer which will be valuable to them. Okay, so uh, I, I would say to um, realize that in, in school, you you probably worked hard and done very well uh, and did, had great grades and maybe that helped you get a job a little bit. I don't know. The real world doesn't work that way. Um, if, if you want to get a raise or a promotion, you have to ask. Uh, you also have to remind people of your successes at work. Uh, and when it comes to engineers, uh, and I am going to stereotype I'm going to stereotype myself because I used to be a software engineer. Make sure that you socialize a lot because what happens with a lot of programmers, myself included, is you're in this zone. And, and you know what I mean? You're coding. And in my days, I drank Jolt and 10 hours would go by. Jolt, Cole, I'm dating myself. You, you're the younger generation. People drink Red Bull now or Diet Red Bull. But I would drink Jolt Cola and I would code for 10 or 12 hours and I wouldn't see or hear anything around that monitor. I was in a zone and I loved it. it. It was wonderful. It was a puzzle. But then what happened was this. Because I was in that zone and not interacting with people as much, I became a little bit antisocial. And I remember I'd, I'd, I'd be in, in, in events where there'd be people that were more senior, sometimes my level, and I'd feel a little bit nervous to talk. And so what I recommend is make sure that you socialize a lot as well and don't just be a coder or like I was a brain on a stick or something else on a stick. You're talking about me. Um, so just make sure that you, you socialize a lot uh, and, uh, and get to know people. And this goes for everybody what I'm going to say next. Do you remember during the first two weeks of school um, or university uh, and everyone was new and you were the new kid? In those first two weeks, you met a lot of people and you're still friends with those people today. What I'm trying to say is that make as many friends as you can and network as much as you can internally in the first two weeks because you get this hall pass because you're the new kid in, in town and people will want to help you out and meet with you. Um, and also find mentors during that time. And you can do a search on my vlog on mentors and it'll teach you how to, how to get mentors as well. So hopefully that, that answers your, your questions. I opened up about uh, little things about me earlier in my career I haven't thought about in years. Joel Cola, wow. <laughs> All right, Fat Shadow 92 has got a question. I, I, I love your, your title there. It's cool. Is that, is that a Marvel Comics reference? All right, so Chris, I need your help. I got a message through LinkedIn about a digital marketing position from Vantage Point AI, an AI-assisted trading software. I think I'd really like to work there. What should I do? Okay, I'll read your follow-up in a second. So the most important thing you can do is to actually uh, network and find people that work at, at Vantage Point if you can and, and meet with them, okay? And just get to know them. And I, I'm going to answer this question as I all do by being generic and helping everybody, which is this. Whenever you go to a business meeting with somebody you're meeting for the first time, or an interview, a job interview, I want you to think what they want in their career, what would help them get to the next level. If it's a salesperson you're meeting with, then I want you to bring a list of three or four people on a piece of paper that could be customers of theirs. I want you to network and find customers for them before the meeting. If it's a meeting with somebody in operations, I want you to bring a one-page write-up, which I explain in my complete job course, on how to do their job better. Not tell them what to do, but maybe a certain technology product to use. And the same thing for an assistant job. I've got a wonderful template I created, uh, which explains how using virtual assistants can help. So imagine you're, you're interviewing for an assistant job and you bring a piece of paper, which helps that person you're interviewing with, who's gonna be your boss, helps them think about a virtual assistant as well. Who does that? It's incredibly disruptive and shows how productive you can be by helping them outsource some of that stuff so that when you come on board, you can hit the ground running. 
And so before you go into a job interview, make sure you have those pieces of paper uh, created so you can add as much value as possible. Okay, and so people are usually motivated by a couple of things in business, and you've got to think from their terms and their perspective always. Okay, like when I create courses for all of you, uh, my, my, my students, I love you all, I always think in terms of you're the student, what do I want, what would help me excel in business or in life, that sort of thing. And so before you meet with somebody in business or a job interview, just understand they're usually motivated by the following things. Number one, they want to get promoted. Number two, they want to make more money. And number three, they want to work with people that are fun to hang out with as well. I'm not telling you to be disingenuous in your interview, but just have a personality. Let your personality shine through. You've come this far in life being yourself. Don't try to be somebody else. So that's what I would say when it comes to Vantage Point AI. You know, find people that, that, um, that work at Vantage Point AI or any company you might want to interview with. Uh, and what I want you to do is I, I want you to, um, to meet with them using LinkedIn. And I, I created a vlog a couple of weeks ago on how to get a meeting with anybody using LinkedIn. You can watch that vlog. Or if you have questions or follow-ups or want me to show you again, I'm happy to do it here as well. What you can also do is you can go and look at the profiles of people that work at Vantage Point AI, for example. Uh, and find out in LinkedIn what they have that got them there. And if there's certain things you need, then get those skills. Go to Twitter as well and find out who those people at Vantage Point AI, for example, are following. I guarantee you they're following their customers. And you can learn a lot about somebody by finding out who they follow in Twitter a lot. And I've logged on that as well. As always, search my vlogs for the answer uh, for how to find out a lot more about a person using Twitter. Okay. Okay, now follow-up question, what would a position like that entail? Um, I, I don't know. I don't know. Digital marketing, I, I would say. Um, obviously, that, that's what the position title is. Um, so just maybe take a course on Udemy on digital marketing. There's a lot of great ones. There, there's, a, there's a guy named Rob Percival uh, who, who's, who's brilliant. Um, and just take his course as well. I'm not an expert in that area, although I am working on creating um, a, a course uh, called the Complete YouTube Course with one of my students I actually met on, on this webcast a couple weeks ago. All right. Um, yeah. All right. So Carter's got a question. What is hedging and how do hedge funds work? Okay. So mutual funds are companies you invest in that buy lots of stocks or other financial instruments like bonds. And what they do is they diversify a portfolio so you don't have to worry about diversification. I think mutual funds are a scam. For more details on that, watch my vlog. I feel like a broken record player here. Watch my vlog on why mutual funds are a scam. Or I can talk about it here. Now, a hedge fund is like a mutual fund. They can also buy stocks. But a hedge fund can also do the opposite. A hedge fund can bet against stocks and make money when stocks go down. And so the reason it's called a hedge fund is because in your backyard, for example, you have hedges all the way around your backyard. And those hedges protect your backyard, so to speak. That's why they're called hedge funds. Okay, And hedge funds can save you a lot of money when the market's not doing well. And it can also make you a lot of money if you invest in the right investor, or the right hedge fund managers. And I've started my own hedge fund. I had an offshore vehicle, an onshore vehicle, a master feeder set up. It's a little bit too much information there, I know. Uh, I've worked for a number of different hedge funds, uh, including the biggest ones in the world. Uh, and uh, I concluded that the best investors are not hedge funds. Okay, they're longer-term focused investors like Warren Buffett. But there are hedge funds that do well, and those are called Tiger Cubs. And so there's a brilliant man named Julian Robertson who founded a hedge fund called Tiger uh, in the 1990s uh, in New York City. He's brilliant, might have been the late 80s. And he's brilliant, and he's great because he's very long-term focused. He looks out three to five years, which is how all hedge funds should invest. And what happened was a lot of people left Tiger um, and they started their own companies. And we call those Tiger Cubs. Now, one example of that is, is Maverick, Blue Ridge. There's, there's tons of them. There's tons of them. So if you want to work at a hedge fund, work at a Tiger Cub. All right. Next up is uh, uh, Wazir. Uh, how are you? Um, oh, my name is uh, Mohammed uh, Tella from Pakistan. How are you? Nice to meet you. 
Um, actually, I, I've met a number of people from Pakistan whose first name is Haroon. But it's spelled differently, H-A-R-O-O-N. It's interesting. Uh, I started your course on financial analysts. I wanted to ask uh, regarding fundamentals on Forex currency pairs. Many times I see the news are positive for U.S. dollar, but still the U.S. dollar decreases in value. Okay. So when it comes to, to foreign currencies, it's very difficult to predict uh, which foreign currency to bet on. And I don't recommend doing it because what happens is you might get um, you might get fooled by randomness. You might be right for the wrong reasons if you invest in a currency, uh, that sort of thing, uh, because they're macro plays. It's usually government officials that say things that make currencies move. And so let's talk about why the U.S. dollar would go up in value or down. So currencies usually go up in value when their governments raise interest rates, which I talked about at the beginning of this call. Currencies also go up in value a lot if they are deemed or thought of as a safe currency compared to other currencies in the world. And it's something we call a flight to quality. And so in 2008, uh, when we were within 24 hours of bank machines actually uh, uh, not working, what happened was the U.S. dollar went up a lot because a lot of people, and, and I'm not just pro-U.S., uh, I'm just telling you what happened. A lot of people uh, in different countries were worried about their own currency and thought their country might default. And so what they did was they bought U.S. dollars just in case. It's a flight to quality. It's like gold. Gold usually goes up when people are really, really panicking. It's a flight to quality. And so the U.S. dollar goes up when the government raises interest rates or when there's a huge, huge global crisis and people want uh, to have a flight to quality. Uh, and, and the U.S. government, many people think, is the last entity in the world or last government that would ever declare bankruptcy. Uh, it's the largest economy in the world. It's, it's about, I think, about a third, maybe 25% to a third of the revenue of the planet. Uh, that's GDP, revenue. Uh, and China will pass the U.S. Uh, by 2040 or so. Okay. All right. Um, and and, and uh, uh, Muhammad, if, if or um, yeah, if, Muhammad, if, if I didn't answer your question there, uh, please let me know, and I'm happy to, to double click and, and drill down in more detail. Thanks. All right. Uh, next question is: Do I know anything about the Black Scholes equation? My lecture was saying it's very relevant for a stock market trading, but I see no mention of it here. Uh, mention of it from research. Sure. So, um, so uh, these two guys, Black and Scholes, Myron Scholes, uh, one of the guys, he actually he teaches at, at Stanford and I exchanged emails with him, with him recently. I'll tell you about that in a second. Uh, what they did was they, they pioneered um, option trading valuation strategies. And so Black Scholes is basically uh, an equation, a very complicated equation. I want you to think of it like it's a black box. Okay. It's an equation. Parameters are fed in and it will tell you what the value should be or how to price options, okay? Don't worry about it, though, because it is very, very complicated. Uh, and, I'm, and I don't fully understand it. That's why I'm saying it. And when I was in business school, we tried to disaggregate it and use the mathematics of it. it it's a waste of time. It's a waste of time. Um, but um, anyway, ho hopefully that's, that, that's helpful. Um, but no, I, I emailed. So I wanted to, to lecture at Stanford years ago, uh, and I kept calling and calling and calling. Uh, and, and, and nobody returned my call. Uh, and finally, I got the, I think it was the associate dean lot at the Graduate School of Business. Uh, and, I, and I do a lot of stuff with them now. They're great. Uh, and, and I told her, I, I said, I'm so sorry. I've left you lots of voicemails. But I, I would love to, to lecture there and get involved. Right? I, I'm persistent. I'm like a pit bull on a pork chop. And so the associate dean said, I don't know. I, email 20 or, th or email teachers, whatever, and just tell them I told you to reach out to them. And so one of the people I reached out to was Myron Schultz. And I emailed him and 20 or 30 other people. Uh, and, and I wrote, so-and-so, the associate dean, told me to reach out to you uh, regarding a guest lecture. And he responded right away because that person, <laughs> the associate dean, was, was his boss. Anyway, I think that was ethical doing what I did. Anyway, so got to take risks, right? They all responded right away, though. It's pretty cool. Okay. Um, Rohit is saying, if... If one is earning average income and is happy with his family and has a meaningful job, but is not very rich, it's okay, right? If one has a meaningful job as being an employee, uh, employee is not worth it. Um, yeah, I mean, absolutely. Um, 
money really is the root of all evil. Um, you're going to find, and, and, and I've made mistakes in the past of allowing friends of mine to invest in my companies. And I made some of my friends a lot of money, but one in particular lost money and he's no longer my friend. And, you know, I, I told him up front, I said, you know, you, you can lose all of it, right? This is, it's, it's a risky investment. Uh, don't do it. Don't raise money from friends and family, okay? Money changes people. It really, really does. So, um, yeah, of course, there's, there's nothing wrong with, with not being very rich. I mean, I don't, I don't chase money as much as I could. And when I did, I was unhappy. You know, when I worked on Wall Street, um, I, I worked um, at Goldman Sachs, wonderful people there, but I was miserable. I was miserable because the cancer of Wall Street and Western society is that every Christmas we compare ourselves to other people uh, when it comes to Christmas bonus. You know, that person made more. That's not fair. It's just greed. You know, greed takes over. Um, and it's extraordinarily un unhealthy, unhealthy. And so don't ever make, um, you know, money your, your idol or your god and, or otherwise you, you, you'll, it'll be a recipe for disaster. In fact, if you chase money, you'll lose your dreams and your money. If you chase your dreams, not only do your dreams come true over time, but the money comes accidentally. You know, I, I don't believe that a lot of people that are extraordinarily wealthy got there because they want money. You know, J.K. Rowling, it wasn't just about the money. It was about writing the Harry Potter series. You know, and, and, and a, lot of, uh, a lot of actors as well and athletes, it's not just about the money. You know, they, they were born loving to play basketball uh, or, or born loving to, to act in the school play. Um, and, and they don't have a job, they have a passion. So, yeah, it's, 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 there's nothing wrong with not, having, not being very rich at all, at all. You know, just live below your means. There's a great book on this in Canada called The Wealthy Barber. Dante, if you're on that call, you should read that book. It talks about um, a barber that, that's a millionaire, but he lives below his means, right? But he doesn't, he's not showy. He doesn't show off to people. Look at me. I, I have this car or this house, that sort of thing. You know, trying to keep up with the Joneses is, uh, is a recipe for disaster. So Rohit, no, there's, there's, there's nothing wrong with that at all. You know, I, I want you to be happy. Like my kids, I'm not trying to raise my kids to be rich. I'm trying to raise them to be happy and let them do what they want to do. You know, one of my kids wants to be a gamer. Who am I to tell them what to do? Okay, who am I to tell them what to do? And if you want to watch my, my vlog, I published, um, it was a really good one um, called, I think it was called Don't Let Anyone Tell You How to Live Your Life. Uh, and I published it on Boxing Day, December 26th. Watch that one if you want. I, I think you'll enjoy that. Okay, so somebody's asking for uh, what, what is my, uh, my, my, my Gmail address. Uh, and um, I was going to say I don't disclose it, but somebody already did. I'm just kidding. <laughs> That's fine. No, no, thanks, Rohit. Thanks for that. I appreciate that. Uh, and it is publicly disclosed, by the way. Uh, and by the way, when when you all, when people email me or LinkedIn message me, if I don't answer right away, if I, if it takes me a while, please don't feel like I'm ignoring you. Okay, it's just I, I I'm I'm really flooded sometimes. Um, all right. So, do I have any tips for writing a book? You once said it's not rocket science, and anyone can do it. Would love some insights about it. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, and, and and I'm going to teach you right now. So whenever you buy a book from Amazon, and I don't, I don't think I have one handy here. Let me see. Hold on a second. Yeah, I don't have one handy. Um, I, I mean, I can't give my books away, but I don't have one handy. Um, whenever you buy a book from Amazon, if it's a paperback, I want you to do this. I want you to look at the last page, okay? And it will say the date and where it was born, where it was made. And the brilliance of Amazon uh, is that um, whenever you order books on Amazon, they haven't been made yet. Okay, most of the time, most of the time, if they're soft cover, they get printed and you get it a day or two later. Amazon has these fulfillment, fulfillment centers all over the world. And the way to write a book is easy. If you know how to use two things, you can write a book. Ready? Number one, Microsoft Word. Number two, a browser. And that's it. And so what I'll do right now is I'm going to share with all of you my book template. And I challenge all of you, and I say it with love in my heart, I challenge all of you to write a book within the next 12 months, right? Set a goal and set a deadline date. Imagine how amazing you'll look if you walk into a job interview and you bring a book. Imagine how amazing you'll look if you apply to a business school and you bring a book. 
There's somebody on my team I used to, used to manage years ago at Goldman Sachs, a wonderful woman named uh, Lei Chen. And I wrote one of her recommendations for Harvard Business School. And I was helping her out uh, to get in. And, and she got in, by the way. Uh, and I was asking her about her background. Uh, and then she, she's so humble. She's such a beautiful person. She, I think she works at Standard Pacific, some hedge fund in Hong Kong now. Lei, if you're watching, I miss you. I love you. How are you? Uh, but... But what Lay, Lay's, I asked, what, what else did you do? And she said, well, I wrote a book. And I said, oh, my God, why didn't you mention this? And so what she did was uh, she actually submitted that book with her application, and she got into Harvard Business School. And so if you write a book, and anybody can do it, it's, it's free and it's easy to do. I promise you, if you go to job interviews or meet with customers and you bring a book, who the hell does that? You do that. And that's why you will excel and get to the next level. So let me show you how to write a book. Okay, so I'm going to go back into screen capture mode. Uh, give me one second to get all set up here. All right, good. Great. All right, now what I'm going to do is, I think I remember the web address. Let me try here. Haroon Ventures. I want all of you to do this, please. Haroon Ventures slash write book. Please work. Oh, no, it doesn't work. Damn it. Okay. So wh what you can do is um, th there's actually a, a template. Here's what we'll do. Um, for, for those of you that are watching the webcast, um, come back to the webcast later and look in the Q&A and we will provide a, a link to it. Uh, and for those of you that have taken my Udemy courses, I, I've, I've sent out things on, on how, to, how to write a book in the past uh, with, with messages there as well. And actually, here's what I'm going to do. I don't want to leave you hanging. So um, I, I want you to do this instead. I want you to go to a, a vlog that I published uh, on, on how to write a book. And we're going to go there together uh, right now. So let's search for the word book. Getting hungry now. Hold on. Oh, book -o. <laughs> I don't know what that means. Sounds like a swear word, book mm. Here it is. All right, great. So how to, how to write a book. Uh, and then um, hopefully I provided a link within here as well. It, it's probably in here. So Wrigley, do me a favor. Go through this. Oh, here it is there. HaroonVentures.com book. All right. Let's do this. HaroonVentures.com book. And this is important. There's, there's a reason why I'm going through this with you. Okay. Um, so here are all the steps here. Go to HaroonVentures.com, all lowercase book. B-O-O-K. And what I did was I created that Word template for you to use, Microsoft Word template. I'm sure you can use Pages or Google Docs, whatever as well. Fill in that template and then upload it to Amazon. And then it's done in print version and Kindle version. Then you can record the audio uh, and make an audio book as well. And I'll show you how to do that, okay? So let's go here first. We're gonna open this book template together, okay? Word Online doesn't work. So I'm, I'm used to Chrome. I got rid of Chrome because if you use Chrome, I promise you, it slows your computer down a lot. There's something called Chrome helpers that run in the background. They're just disastrous. Anyway, so let me go here. I'm going to open up this book template and I'm going to show you together how to do this. Okay. There's Word. Good. All right. And let me maximize this. Good. Wrigley, if there's ever issues, you will send me a message. All right, good. All right, so here it is here. That's my little motivational thing. You, best-selling author. All right, so this template here, and let me zoom out a bit. This template here is actually a six by nine book. Okay, here it is here. And all you have to do is just write your text starting here. Put the title there, obviously. Don't change the formatting, and I'll sh I'm going to show you why in a second. Okay. You, you write, um, you put your title here, and I'll show you how to get an image in a second, okay? And then what you do is you, you put down all the stuff here, copyright. If you want to copyright something, you can go to uh, copyright.gov, uh, and I can show you how to copyright from scratch. It costs you 35 bucks, that's it, okay? Don't hire lawyers for that. All right, then you dedicate it, and I dedicate it to, to my mom and dad, and, and, and when they read it, they, they, they will tear up. It's amazing. Yeah? I, I, I'm still trying to impress my mom and dad, even at this age. Actually, my, my, one of my biggest dreams is this. My dad reads the New York Times every day. And I've been trying to write an article in the New York Times. 
uh, but I've never gotten accepted. And I want my dad to be reading it one day in Florida um, with, with my mom. He'll say, oh, Jackie, look here. Oh, Imshi Habibi. Chris Rosal uh, uh, is writing New York Times. Or, I, I butcher that accent. Anyway, Habibi. That's, that's honey, I think, in, in Arabic. All right. So, and then what you do is you're going to double click here and just change the titles here. So change uh, chapter one title high. And I'm gonna show you why I'm doing this because if I go right here now, I'm gonna zoom in. And if you right click now here, watch what happens. Okay, and a lot of you that have used Word for years are gonna get it. Um, see, it changes here, see? And the page numbers change as well, okay? So what I want you to do is I want you to write this book. I challenge you. And if you tell your friends and family, that you're writing a book, you're gonna write a book because every time you see them, they're, they're gonna say, hey, how's that book coming? You finished the book yet? That sort of thing. So um, please write a book and have fun with it too. And I put in inspirational quotes in each chapter as well usually. Um, and then um, w once you're finished with the book uh, here, what you do is you obviously you, you save it. Um, and, and then you go back here and let me go to uh, the next steps here. It's been a while. Oh yeah, this is the template I used to write my networking book and 101 Crucial Lessons as well, and all my books. Next, what you do is this. You then go here to KDP, that's Kindle for Amazon, Kindle Direct Publishing. And then what you're gonna do is you're going to, um, I don't know if it's called any sign-in, whatever. Um, what, what you're gonna do is you're gonna upload uh, your book here, okay? And what will happen is it, you're gonna, you might have to save it as a PDF first. So what you do is you go to file, save as PDF, okay? Or you can hit print to PDF. And then what you do is you just upload your, your book here, okay? And so here's all these, these books I have. Um, anyway, so, so, so they're all here. They're, this is exactly how it works. And that's for the, um, the Kindle version, okay? Now, next up, and it, it walks you through pricing and all that fun stuff too. Then what you do is you're going to upload to another website by Amazon called um, uh, Create Space. And this webcast, you can always come back to it and click and rewatch me again. Uh, and then here you, 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 you log in, whatever. Uh, and then you just upload it here. Uh, and then the, the, the paper version will, will, will get created for you. Okay. One more thing. Two more things, actually. I want to talk about Audible. And then I want to talk about how to get the cover made. Okay. So the next step is you go to ACX. And ACX is audible.com. And, and what you can do is you just upload it here. Uh, if, if you know how to use a, a browser uh, and, and record anything on these things, you can do use Audible. It's really, really easy. Uh, and so this actually, this took me, I've only used Audible once. It was over three hours on, I think it was November 2015. Uh, and and my, my, my book is there, my 101 Crucial Lessons book. Um, and anyway, you just upload it here. It's really, really intuitive. Um, I'm curious. I, I haven't been here for a while. Um, let, let's go to um, my sales dashboard, I guess. Here it is here. Oh, yeah. And there's something called a bounty, which means this. If somebody signs up for Audible, so audible.com is an Amazon company. It's $15 a month, and you get a couple of books on audio. Please do it. Okay, it's great. Um, and... If somebody gets the free first month, that you get a free trial, and then they sign up for it, you get 50 bucks. And so I've got 50 bucks times 57 for just the bounty. Uh, and this is a couple of years ago. So if we view this book on, on Audible, um, you can see it here. Um, this is it here. Um, anyway, it, it, it was my first time doing it. It wasn't polished. The ratings are good, but I think people are being a little bit, little bit too generous. But anyway... That's, that's that. And that was me kind of showing off too. That I have a book on Audible. Okay, let's call a spade a spade. Oh, one more thing. Let's talk about how to, um, and, and Wrigley, if, if sound ever goes, just, just send me a message. Um, now, what I want to show you is, um, I want to show you how to get the cover made for five bucks. So I said it was free. I lied. Sorry, it's actually five bucks. What you do is you go to fiverr.com. And fiverr.com, you can get anything you want done for five bucks, pretty much. And you can pay more than five bucks if you want higher quality. Now, there's this uh, this wonderful woman here, uh, and I, I didn't know where she was from until recently, uh, but she's actually from, um, from Bangladesh. 
and uh, here's the person I use. So if I click here and, and I go to Fiverr, okay, uh, this is the person that, that made my books. Bangladesh, see right there, that's right, yeah. Uh, and, and look at the quality of the books that, that she makes are amazing. So use her actually, please, she's amazing. She's great, she's great. Uh, and you can tip as well. I wonder why she's not profiling my book. That's okay, it's fine. All right, let me go back now to the webcast. Uh, and uh, again, Wrigley, if there are any issues, just ping me, otherwise don't. All right, thank you. All right, let's go back now to where I was. Make sure I've got the right camera. Is that the one? Yeah, okay, good. I'll clear clear the background. And I apologize, that, that, that was a long-winded answer, but, but I think it's important, I think it's important. Um, because I was Kardec, uh, who's saying, I'm having trouble um, exporting the balance sheet, profit and loss and cash flow statement to Microsoft Excel. Can, can you help? It, you can't, um, not all websites allow you to export. And, and if they do, sometimes it's in what's called CSV or comma separated value, which I drew this, okay? Thanks. But what you can do is um, some websites, and this probably won't work out that well, you, you can actually do um, a, a copy and paste. Um, you can try that. All right, next up we've got is uh, Jeremy. Hey, Jeremy, thanks a lot for your, your, your comments this, this week on YouTube. It touched my heart. Thank you. Appreciate that. Thank you. Um, and, and, and Jeremy is saying amen to, to not caring what other people think about you. Uh, Happy New Year. Thanks, buddy. You too. All right, Joel's got a, a question. Besides um, How to Stop Worrying and How to Start Living, which is a book by Dale Carnegie, do you have um, 10 other books you think would uh, to read to develop our skills? Okay, um, so I mean, I, I get I get asked this question a lot, and, and I never do do the best answer uh, for you. And, and I will bring all those books uh, one week. There's there's one called um, uh, when, when Genius Failed, and and when Genius Failed was uh, was was written um, or was written about uh, this hedge fund, which. Nobel laureates started Nobel Prize winners. They raised billions, the smartest people on the planet, and they failed so miserably, so miserably, right? And the name of their firm was Long-Term Capital Management. They failed so miserably that they almost forced the economy into a recession. Okay, so the reason I mention this, um, and it's basically, it's 203 pages, and what you'll get out of this is one thing, which is this. Don't ever rely on anyone else's research when you're investing in companies. Always do your own, okay? So that, that's that one there. Another one is called Fooled by Randomness. And this one is it's by uh, Nassim uh, Nicholas uh, Taleb, really smart guy, but it, it's kind of, it was hard for me to read. Um, and, and, and I read it, I remember it was, it was uh, August of 2003. Uh, I was just about to start at a big hedge fund called Citadel. And I went to Hawaii by myself. I had a week off and Christine had to work. And I, and I read this and it was really hard to read. But the, I'm glad I read it because it actually, it helped me out a lot. Um, and the bottom line here is, don't be a day trader. Don't ever invest for the short term because I promise you, it's a recipe for disaster. You'll be right for the wrong reasons and vice versa. And if you think historically, and I'm talking to everybody, myself included on this call, pick a stock that you did well in years ago. Now, I want you to look at how the stock market did that year. If the stock market went up a lot that year or that month when you made money, that might be why you made money on that stock. Or if an entire sector went up a lot that month or that year, maybe that's why you made money on that stock. Just be longer term focused because I promise you it's a recipe for disaster. And you, you ever see how there's there's no like amazing traders you hear about that are successful longer term? Like, do you know their names? Nobody does. You have to be long term focused and not fooled by randomness. And, and this kind of goes hand in hand. And, and, and as always, the, the green screen get, gets messed up. Um, so... It's called The Intelligent Investor, written by Benjamin Graham. And he was a professor at, at Columbia. And that's why Warren Buffett went to Columbia as well. And this will teach you how to be a long-term investor. It'll put you to sleep as well. I'm so sorry. It's, it's a little bit dry, uh, but it gets the point across. And so treat this like a textbook. You know, maybe read it first thing in the morning with no distractions uh, for an hour or two. And that's it. And then come back to it later when, when, you, when you're fresh again. Um, and, and, and there are a number of other books, but I, I really actually enjoy, um, I enjoy Audible. And let, let's go to Audible together, and, and I'm going to show you books that, that, that I highly recommend reading. Okay, so, um, and Audible is much better than reading uh, print books, because 
two things. Number one, I just don't have time for that anymore. Um, or or I, I'm not as focused as I used to be, to be honest. And Audible, you can listen to um, these books while you're going on a walk, releasing serotonin at the gym, in the car. I love my, my drives now because of Audible. And you can also hear, and this is important, the, the voice of the author, if applicable and if available. And I love listening to biographies from successful people. Like listen to Richard Branson's. You can, you can feel and hear his enthusiasm when you listen to his books on Audible. He's a genius. And the corporate culture in any company is set by the person at the top. And that's why everybody that works in Virgin companies like Virgin America or Virgin Atlantic, uh, which is a Richard Branson company, they're all so happy. They love, they love what they do. All right, so let's go together to, um, to Audible. And, and I'm going to start um, recommending um, some, some books. Uh, let me just make a small crisp there. You can see I've got the, the light up above my head there. I should exit that or hide that. Give me one second. Screen capture. All right, let's do it. All right. So we are going to go to Audible. Oops, that's audio blocks. Oh, by the way, if, if you want to get uh, royalty-free music, sound effects, or videos, go to this website and get them. Okay, it's, there's a subscription. It's like 100 200 bucks a year. I, I pay because that's what I do. And that's why I use my vlogs, okay? All right, so if we go to Audible, squirrel. All right, and I've got two credits available. So every month you get like three credits, and Christine uses these as well quite a bit. Um, so let's let's look. Oh, Trevor Noah. That's right. He's that guy from South Africa. I might do that one next. Yeah, yeah. So you know, if 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 you're curious about um, and, and inspired by by Michelle Obama, it's great because she reads the book as well. And and actually, one of my students sent me that that book recently. Thank you, thank you for that, uh, Michelle. All right, uh, Seth Godin, who's a marketing genius. And earlier in the call, somebody asked me about digital marketing. Don't take digital marketing advice from me. Take it from Seth Godin. He's better than I ever will be at that. Uh, but but I'll go through uh, and, and I always like to look at um, the, the the top business books as well. But let me just show you my books actually. Account details. Some of this might be personal. All right. Where are my books? Purchase history. Okay, good. Yeah. So here's what I'm doing right now. So this is book uh, Blitz Scaling. Uh, which is by Reed Hoffman. I haven't even started it yet. I, I, I downloaded it because um, a, a buddy of mine who I had dinner with mentioned it on the 23rd at dinner. And so immediately I downloaded it. I always do that. And whenever I used to go into the offices of successful people, I would always look at their bookshelves. And then I would order their books that they have by the time I got out of the elevator from Amazon. Now, you can't find that anymore because a lot of people don't buy hardcover books. But you can always go to Twitter to see who they follow, and they follow authors. Okay, so let's go through these. So Reed Hoffman is is the dude that founded um, he founded um, um, LinkedIn, uh, and this guy I don't know who he founded, but I think he's successful. Um, so anyway, um, read that book. Oh, by the way, I want you all to read the book. I should have mentioned this one before. I'm so sorry. Uh, it, it's called The Startup of You. It's by Reed Hoffman. It teaches you how to network better than I can ever teach you. The Startup of You. All right, here's other ones. Uh, Christine loves uh, just tax stuff uh, for, for the company. Let's see what else we got. The Lean Startup, that was, uh, Wrigley mentioned that to me, uh, which is how to be a lean startup. In, in my company, there's only Wrigley and I. That's it, right? We outsource everything else. I believe small groups of people can change the world. Small groups of people in a garage. Big companies can't when the founders left. All right, um, <clears throat> crushing. Oh, Gary Vaynerchuk. I want you to listen to, to Gary Vaynerchuk books as well. Okay. And Gary V is this guy who, um, he had this, uh, his dad started this wine company and he took it from 3 million to 50 million leveraging online stuff. Uh, and for anybody that wants to learn about social media stuff, uh, don't take advice from me. Uh, take it. I mean, I'll give you my opinion, but, but this is the authority, Gary Vaynerchuk. Uh, and if you're curious, what social network should you be active on for your company or yourself? Just scroll down and, and see what he's on. Here they are in this order. Okay. These are the important ones in this order. Okay. Notice there's no Google Plus. <laughs> so Instagram is, is huge. Um, YouTube is the second biggest search engine in the world. Um, you, you get the idea. It's interesting he has podcasting here. He's just getting into that now. So anyway, uh, take uh, listen to his books. A lot of people find him abrasive. 
but he grows on you because he's so honest and transparent. So do this one. Um, any cryptocurrency stuff you see here, ignore. Okay, that was just research for me for my 24-hour cryptocurrency course. All right, let's see here. But but I want to be you know really really transparent and and, and show you everything that, that I've ever read over Audible. Okay, because you guys are asking me what what books do I read? That's it. Oh, last three sixty five days. All right. Um, I mean I can, I could go back and back and back. If we go to uh, two thousand seventeen, if you go back anyway, it'll take a while. I don't want to waste your time. Uh, this is a book I was actually uh, quoted in uh, by this lady who doesn't believe you should get MBAs. Let's see what else is there. Yeah, anti-aging. You you can slow down aging. You can't reverse. It. You can slow it down. So I, I anyway, I read a lot of books on that that sort of thing because I want to be teaching you all when I'm a hundred. All right. Anyway, it'll, it'll take it'll take too long. But there's a lot more Gary Vaynerchuk, and there is just a ton of biographies as well. Tons of them. Tons of them. Tons of them. Okay. Yeah. All right. Great. Christine wants to buy property, so that's what she's looking at. All right. Let me go back now. And what I will do is I will clear that layer and then change the scene. You guys know where that is, right? I asked you last week. Okay. All right. Next question. Let's see here. Okay. So a question on um, technical knowledge RA, which is a center for financial research, accounting stuff, whatever. His name is uh, Howard, Howard Schillitz, I think. Uh, and so he wrote a book called Financial Shenanigans. So search Amazon for a book called Financial Shenanigans, and it'll teach you how to read financial statements like a good book. That's the accounting nerd in me. Okay, so Rohit saying, let's be honest. Sorry, Rohit, I, I, lost, I lost my spot there. Stay with me, people. <laughs> Sorry, it happens sometimes when I get a ton of questions. Oh, here we go. Let's be honest. Who is passionate about investment banking? Everybody wants to be one. Nobody knows why. It's true. It's true. Um, you, you know, a, a lot of people, a lot of my students actually, they, um, they, 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 they want to become investment bankers, but, but they don't know why. You, you have to understand why you want to join a, a certain career or go on a certain career path. Um, it, it, a lot of people end up concluding that they want to be investment bankers because they want to make a lot of money, and that's a recipe for disaster. And I fell into that trap too. I mean, we 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 all did. Um, and, you know, when I was an undergrad, um, and, and even in business school, a, a lot of people want to be investment bankers. They don't know why. Understand what it is first, though, okay? Because I promise you, you won't make more money per hour. You'll make the same amount as everybody else, okay? All right, next up is, <laughs> I agree, Joel, we'll throw it, exactly. Yeah, that was, uh, that, that, was, that was Hong Kong, love that place. Game tech is the future, yes. Yeah, so my, my, one of my kids wants to be a gamer. MLG, actually, Major League Gaming, is going to be bigger than Major League Baseball or any sports one day, I promise you. And... It's interesting because uh, for those of you that play Fortnite, um, there's this guy named Ninja, and he gets paid a couple million dollars a year uh, just to play Fortnite. Right? He's sponsored and everything, and everybody watches him, and he's a rock star, dude. And I promise you, if you put Brad Pitt and Al Pacino and Ninja into a, a restaurant at different tables, and then you had all teenagers and 20-somethings and 30-somethings, more people would recognize Ninja. It's amazing. And it's, it's such a big deal because uh, my next door neighbor uh, was really excited because he, he told and it's my son's best friend. He told my son, oh, my God, you're not going to believe this. this. This is made my day. I just got killed by, by Ninja in Fortnite. He got off by him. It's a pretend, pretend shooting game. Yeah. So I, I believe game tech is, is the future and edutainment is the future. And the future is now because it's so hard for us to really focus on boring stuff like this, meaning books, when it, it's, it's so much easier to learn by being taught uh, in a more edutaining or entertaining and educational way as well. Uh, and game tech is the future. I think gamification is going to be a huge growth market for schools as well. Imagine if you could, you could learn with, with virtual reality goggles on. I, I need a shameless plug here. Hold on. Not for me, for, for Tony Shark. 
right? He's been in a couple of my courses. But this is the future. This is the future of, um, uh, of, of, of learning and gaming too. And, and once you put on that, those, uh, th these goggles, you never want to take them off. And I, I got one recently for my, my PS4. And I mean, the games are great, but whatever. It, what, what really blew me away is you can go to YouTube and do a search on VR anything or 360 anything. And I was riding roller coasters. My, my son, Dylan, my youngest one, he loves Titanic. And so we, rolled a, we rode a roller coaster on the Titanic. You know, I flew in an army jet over over China. It was awesome. Scary as hell, too. Uh, the G-Force. I felt like my, my face was going to get ripped off. But um, anyway, I agree. Game tech is the future. Okay, next question is from Ed. Uh, thoughts on working uh, with, um, with, with brokers uh, versus fiduciaries to assist uh, with your financial planning? So... I think, okay, so if, if you're going to get um, somebody to, to manage your, 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 your money, um, usually the fees are 1%. Uh, make sure it's not more than 1% per year, but be careful because what happens is find out if they get compensated to sell you financial instruments that their company makes. Okay, so these private wealth management or PWM folks um, that are, you know, chasing golf carts after, you know, somebody has a, a big IPO or whatever, chasing CEOs, golf carts. When they get them as customers, um, they, they charge them about 1%. And then they, they also screw them over on fees sometimes uh, if, if they have to sell products from their own company. And a lot of these private wealth managers, um, it, it's, it's actually a really good business because it's one of the few finance businesses where you can work at one investment bank or one firm, okay, and then quit and take your clients with you and open up somewhere else at another firm. So you can go from Bank of America to Wells Fargo. But make sure that whoever your private wealth manager is, uh, is allowed to sell you other stuff and make sure they don't get compensated for the stuff they sell you. So that's that's what I would say. But I've I've got a course called the uh, Complete Personal Finance Course and, and, and I recommend taking that because I, I, I humbly believe it'll teach you more than they understand. And I know I know that was kind of Borderline arrogant, but but I care. I care. Okay. All right. Um, and, and by the way, if, if this format, if this is helpful and y'all like it, please click the like button. I just want to get some, some feedback. Thank you. All right. Uh, and then what I'll do is, for those that stay on the call later, I don't want to waste all of your time. I'm going to show you my, my new camera setup and the old one. I actually have two cameras running in parallel, and I just want to get your advice on which one looks better. Thanks. All right. Next question I've got is from uh, from Kardik. Uh, do I think technology will affect the job sector in finance uh, and, and accounting? Um, I, I mean, it will. I, I think there's certain jobs that, um, and I published. Um, I think it was around Christmas Day or so. Um, what, what what finance jobs will be in demand in the future? And so, what I always like to do when I'm thinking of anything in business is I think five years from now. Five years from now what will be more relevant or less relevant? Well, we all know that in five years, artificial intelligence will be more relevant than it is today. So I think that artificial intelligence-based trading algorithms will be, uh, will be you know, more relevant than they are today. And if you're curious about that, there's a great hedge fund run by Jim Simmons who makes 50% per year, uh, and, and it's called Renaissance Technologies. And he has a couple thousand Linux servers uh, uh, running in parallel. And they pick stocks. Like if it's raining a lot outdoors for a month, whatever, uh, then restaurant stocks go down because people don't go out to eat when it's raining. That, that sort of thing. So uh, I, I think that technology will disrupt um, the finance industry. Uh, I think that trading traders, people that are traders or just do execution, will lose their jobs unless they kind of focus on something else. And if you're a trader, um, I, I would focus on something artificial intelligence based. Take courses by Kirill. Uh, who is the, the, the best teacher on Udemy is amazing. And he'll teach you about artificial intelligence stuff, which might help you with, with, with trading or retooling if you want to get out of that career. Now, when it comes to accounting, yes, of course, um, accounting will be disrupted, just like it has been over the past 25 years with QuickBooks and, and, and Quicken and, and ERP as well. Um, but, but I think that there will always be a demand for somebody that's going to actually look at your books, your accounting financial statements. 
uh, and, um, and, and apply new tax codes and new laws, et cetera, to make sure that, that you're paying as little tax as possible. So I hire, of course, I have an accountant. I outsource it. I also have, um, I, I actually have a tax lawyer. Uh, it's, it's a firm called Tax Ninja in San Francisco. It's really expensive, but you know what? It saves you a fortune. They saved me a fortune a fortune. And if you're ever think, I, I recommend all of you hire a tax lawyer to look, if you have a company, to look at your financials. And it might cost you a lot of money to do it, but I promise you, it's a great investment. You'll save a lot of money as well. All right. Next up, um, I've got, uh, hello from Crypto Sipto. Hey, how are you? What's up? Fujimori son, you are on the call. Thank you. I, I mentioned Japan and the Minister of Finance earlier, and I, I, I did that for you. Awesome. Awesome. And I met mikitani son years ago from, from Rakuten. Okay. And, and actually the, uh, the CEO, Kevin uh, of, 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 uh, of Udemy, he sold his last company, Ebates, to, to uh, mikitani son. Um, anyway, kind of cool, which is uh, Rakuten. All right. So uh, Arun's got a question. Good morning, Chris. How are you doing? Hope you're all, I'm doing great. Thanks, man. How are you? Um, I wish to start a hedge fund as a long-term goal in a B-school interview, would that be seen as negative? No, uh, I, I think that, I think it's okay. Um, just, you know, just be honest and say why you want to start a hedge fund though. And, and don't say it's about the money as well. If, if part of you wants to create a scholarship fund, um, mention that as well. Mention that as well. Uh, and I, I promise you that if and when, I, I should say when Arun, you, you make your billions, um, giving away feels so much better than spending on yourself. You know, just think of it this way. Like if you have a dollar or two dollars um, and or at least I, I have a dollar or two dollars, I'll, I'll speak for myself. It, and I see somebody that needs it. If I give it to them, it makes me feel so much better than if I spent it on myself. It's interesting. It's interesting. So and if you want to learn about starting a hedge fund, uh, Arun, you, you can you can always ask me here uh, on this call. Uh, or if you if you take my my MBA program, uh, which I'll announce later this year, um, I'll actually help you help you do it from scratch. And I've started a hedge fund as well, as you know. Uh, I know all about onshore, offshore vehicles, uh, that sort of thing. Um, anyway, I don't want to go into too much detail there. Okay, so um, and I missed one here from Cardick in the middle. You say if you want something, you ought to ask. But when I ask, they become offensive uh, and don't want to help me. What should I do in that, that situation? Okay, okay. So you, you, you have to let me know what, what, what the situation is, right? Uh, but, but if they become offended, um, as, as long as you're asking in a, in a polite way, which I, I know that we all do, but dude, you got, you got nothing to lose, man. If, if you ask somebody and, and you know that if they say no, you're never gonna see them again anyway, if you offend them, so what? Who cares? Doesn't matter, doesn't matter. Um, but but give me some more details there, please. It's it's like saying this: if you if you ask somebody out on a date, uh, and they said no or they got offended uh, that I shouldn't ask that person out because she's way out of my league, should I not ask somebody out after that ever again? Is way out of my league? Fuck no, I'll ask again. So if 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 you fail when you you're asking for things, um, I want you to understand that it's a it's it's the law of of, of um, it's mathematics and probability. You know, if you have a 10% chance of, of, of getting a date with somebody unbelievable, then 10 times you ask, maybe the 11th you'll get it, maybe. You know, it's kind of like, oh my God, I got I to gotta quote Jim Carrey. This is the best quote ever. Okay, in Dumb and Dumber, <laughs> like you know where I'm going with this. In Dumb and Dumber, he, there is this girl in, in the movie who actually became his wife. Eventually, they got divorced later in life. But uh, he, he said to her, what are the chances of a girl like you and a guy like I going on a date. And she said, I say it's about one in a million. And then Jim Carrey pauses and he goes, so you're saying there's a chance. Yes. <laughs> anyway. All right. Next up, um, Joe. Hey, Joe. All right. Uh, I'm interested in PWM, which is private wealth management, which means managing money for other people. But I don't have a huge Rolodex. Uh, I've read your networking book, but the risk averse side of me is skeptical based on the commission style of this type of role. Okay. Okay. So uh, I, 
I, I think 1% is actually fair if you can help people make more money or save more money than that 1% per year. Like if I manage your finances, and I, I don't do that for anybody, but if I were to do it, um, I would look to see where you're spending too much money tax-wise and try to save you money tax-wise. Or I would get a, a tax attorney involved. I'm not a tax attorney as, at all. I shouldn't be giving legal advice at all, right? But but I could I could help you save money on taxes. And if you take my course, the complete personal finance course, I teach you over 100 ways to save money on lots of things, lots of things. Um, so I, I think it's actually... I, from a risk adverse perspective, um, I think it's quite the opposite, quite the opposite. Um, you'll be helping people out a lot um, if, if you do it. And a lot of times you have to take certain designations first before you become a, a, a private wealth manager. But Joe, work, work for somebody else first that's an expert in this area before doing it yourself um, if, if you're worried about um, the risk side of it. Okay. Okay. And if I did not answer your question there properly, please, uh, please, please let me know. All right. Now, I want you to all stay with me for a second here. Because what I'm going to do is um, I, I'm going to open up the, the door. It's getting it's getting hot. Um, and remember the disaster of last week. Um, what, what I did actually was I, I put all this foam stuff in the door and, and a garbage bag as well. So that um, I don't know if you can see me there. I think you can. Uh, so that um, uh, the noise is fine. But I also have this here. So check this out here. I'll show you. This is my MacGyver side. See this? This will keep the light out. And I'm going to hang this up here and then open the door. Give me a second, please. All right. Don't worry, Wrigley. This will take literally 30 seconds this time. All right, good. Now, let me just open up the door. All right, did this work? Let me go back to green screen mode. Yes, we did it. I did it. Okay. All right, next question. This is great, man. This is a breakthrough because now I won't perspire as much. I had feedback from one of my students uh, that took my um, my complete presentation course and they said you were perspiring so much it made me feel uncomfortable. I was like, sorry, I guess. All right. I get the weirdest feedback. <laughs> I got one the other day. Dude, I don't know how to read into this. This, this is out there. But, but somebody said, and the feedback was only this. I'm sitting in my underwear right now. I'm like, do I flag that? Look, I don't know what to do. <laughs> But my Andrew, my my fourteen year old saw it. He started laughing. Anyway, okay. So when you're talking about what program to find Joe for for PWM, just go with a large investment bank, any big bank. You know, Goldman Sachs, Morgan Stanley. Um, I know a lot of people that that have done it at Morgan Stanley. It's a great firm to do it at. Okay. And and I actually find that. I have friends that work in private wealth management, and what they do is they network and find people from similar backgrounds to them. I have one guy who's um, really successful, and he's Greek, and uh, he approached a lot of uh, Greek Greek shipping magnates or business executives, and he has them as clients now. It's interesting. Crypto. Crypto Sipto's got a question. How do you convince... Uh, in, Wrigley, if you're on the call, uh, let me know if, if that background noise from outdoors is is, um, is annoying or not. It, it, it should be fine, but whatever. All right. So I, I've got a question. Um, make sure it works here. No, we're good, actually. Good. All right. It's fine. All right. How do you convince your wife it was okay to quit your job and start working for yourself? I want to be my own boss by the roaring 20s. Cheers. I love that. The I think was it was it Jeremy that that introduced me to the Roaring Twenties that that concept a couple of days ago over YouTube. I love that. Um, I just um, like Christine always knew that I was a, a risk taker and, and that I just wanted I wanted something I wanted to be independent. Um, but what you got to do is this: 
So I, I, I remember when you start a company, you got to give yourself two years. And after two years, you got to say to yourself, okay, two years have passed. There's been some issues. Had I known about the issues when I started the company, would I still have started the company? And if the answer is no, shut it down, move on. Don't be emotional about business. And so if it's something with convincing your, your, your wife, you know, um, just, just say, I'm going to give it two years. I'm going to give it two years. Okay. And I, I don't want you to use your own money. Okay. I, I want you to use other people's money. You know, use a little bit of your own if you want, but I don't want you to put your family, your house, your wife, your kids uh, in, in jeopardy. Okay. If you network a lot, like, I, like I'm teaching you how to do, uh, then you will be able to raise money. And I, I, don't, I don't invest in, in my students' startups, but I promise you, you will find somebody, a wealthy person, uh, by leveraging LinkedIn that will invest in your company. Okay, And they'll own part of the company. Less than 50%, you'll still have control. But they'll own part of the company. And that will put you at ease so you can sleep at night. Okay. All right. All right. Ne next question is, um, is from uh, uh, Crypto Sipto. Uh, Forex is controlled by the banks. Uh, you're a small fish in a big pond. I, I agree. I agree. And that was uh, an answer to a previous question. All right. So, uh, Daniel. Hey, Daniel. How are you? Uh, what are the three to five books you'd recommend to someone early in their careers? Also, what advice today would you give uh, to your post-MBA self upon graduating? Okay, great. So, the books I, I mentioned earlier uh, in the call. Uh, and um, w when the call is is written up by the end of tomorrow, you can go back and click on that if you have, if you didn't see my answer there. Um, and then advice. Okay, advice. What would I give to myself? A couple things. Number one, you'll never get anything in life unless you ask, right? Like everybody got promoted at Goldman Sachs uh, that, that I worked with. They asked for it. You know, you want to raise, you got to ask. Um, so you have to ask if you want anything in life. Now, a more important piece of advice I, I would have given myself, thanks, Wrigley. A more important piece of advice I would have given myself uh, is just don't chase money because you'll, you'll be depressed. And, and the happiest day you'll have professionally is the day, you know, the day you graduate business school. You'll be miserable for the rest of your life. Think of how many lawyers, right? Non-civil rights lawyers. Okay? I, I love civil rights lawyers. But the others, I don't know. Think of how many lawyers are miserable, yet they make a lot of money. So, Daniel, just uh, it sounds like you're 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 graduating business school now. Just don't don't do it for the money. Do what you love doing in life, and I promise you, I promise you, you'll be really successful and happy. And if you're happy, it's this 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 this, this circle where it makes if you're happy, it makes you healthy, and it makes you make more money as well. Not that you want to whatever, maybe you do, but it just comes naturally. And I also want you to start millions of companies on the side, okay, until one takes off. And then when, when one takes off, then I want you to quit your job and make that your full-time gig so that your, your business idols can become your rivals. All right. Daniel's saying, uh, what are the, the best three to five resources I use for keeping tabs on the state of the economy and the market? Thank you. So I, I'm, a, I, I'm so long-term focused uh, that I don't, I don't really follow the news as much as, as a lot of people might. Um, if, if there's a major crisis of confidence in the market, I, 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 mean, I get my alerts, my Wall Street Journal alerts or CNN breaking news alerts. Uh, but... Um, you know, and, and, and I find that kind of removing myself a little bit from the media um, makes me a better investor, makes me a happier person as well. Uh, and in today's vlog, which will which will drop at, at 11 a.m. automatically on, on YouTube, um, I, I talk about um, how you know younger people are more positive than older people because they don't pay attention to television or, or awful news channels. They just watch fun vloggers. So it's important to obviously be abreast of important uh, developments. And sometimes I'll find out about them uh, over, over Facebook. But you know what, dude? I don't need to be told the same news 10 times. And by, I find that by watching the news, you're, you're kind of wasting your time. Because a lot of times it's telling you stuff you already know. 
but it's throwing the fear factor in there as well because you know the media's job is to sell advertisements. And the way that media does it is by being controversial at times, right? Like, uh, like breaking news, whatever it is. So anyway, uh, I stay away from all that stuff. And like I mentioned in previous webcasts, don't ever read editorials, okay? Don't ever read sponsored stories. Try not to watch interviews with executives on television because they're all biased. Everybody's biased. Always ask yourself, why are they saying this? Oh, because they're CEO of that company. Oh, that's right, because they're shareholders. So try to block everything out if you can, if you can. Okay. All right. Um, But what I do do actually is, for me, I'll listen to, like, I like podcasts. Like I used to, in, in July of 2005, when podcasts were first released, I would listen to the Wall Street Journal podcast which is a five-minute summary, and the Wall Street Tech Journal podcast as well, another five-minute summary of everything you need to know because I worked in financial markets at that time. So, uh, But podcasts are great. So maybe find your favorite podcaster uh, and then just kind of, I don't know, listen to the news that way or, or, or watch John Oliver weekly. I'm kidding, but I'm not. Okay. All right, next one I've got is uh, crypto... Uh, I'm a restaurant manager, and I always tell my servers, if they chase the money while serving, they will never be happy. It's so true. If they chase providing amazing experiences for guests, the money will flow. Absolutely. Absolutely. And th- there's so many different ways to look at it. Um, you know, if you if you work in the services industry, um, you know, or, or if you're, you're a taxi driver, instead of being upset and I don't like my job, just think of how many interesting people you're going to meet on your journey in life, you know, while you're serving them in restaurants or driving them and what you can learn from them. It's amazing. So, but I I love that. I love that. Thanks for sharing that. All right. So, okay. So, hey, you said you go over my CV during the live broadcast. I emailed you earlier on following the question. I asked. Okay. All right. Fair enough. All right. So what I'm going to do is um, I'm going to go to my my Gmail. Just stay with me for a second. And and I'm going to open. I'm not going to share with you my Gmail because it's not that I don't trust you. (laughs) Okay. Gmail. And then once I have it open up, uh, I'm going to go through your your resume uh, with with everybody else in the call here. I, I wasn't sure if you accepted it, but hold on a second. Let me see here. Aha, Neil Neil Patel. Okay, good, good, got it. All right, stay with me, everybody, because I'm gonna I'm gonna download this and we're we're gonna go through this together. All right, uh, and now I'm gonna share my screen. And and whenever I answer questions, specific questions for for people, I always try to make the answers generic enough uh, so that it, it is applicable to um to everybody else. Hold on, screen capture. Okay, I'm gonna change my environment. A little bit of ocean makes me happy. All right, um, and I'm so sorry to do this to you guys, but g- give me one second. I want to actually make me a little bit bigger here so you can actually see me. All right, that's me. And then I'm going to crop the top off here so you can get rid of that annoying light. All right, great. All right, there we go. Now I'm going to go and look at your resume with everybody else here online. All right. All right. So, and and I'm just going to give you uh, my, my humble thoughts. Okay. Uh, and, and everyone's different. It's it's too long already. Um, I, I think that one page is sufficient. And let me see here. All right. And, and I'm going to be, I'm going to be very transparent and, and please don't be insulted at all as I go through this. Okay. I just want to, I want to humbly help if I can. All right. So, Right here, uh, and maybe this is a PDF thing, um, there, there are these lines here which are distracting, okay, and, and here as well. Uh, and then also, if you're going to use gray shading like this, uh, make sure that your name is included as well, okay? Don't, don't do it halfway through. It's, it's a little bit uh, c- confusing. All right, and that will go to your, your, your Hotmail account. Um, and uh, I used to have a Hotmail account, uh, but I changed it, and, and I and I humbly recommend that, that you change as well to Gmail. And I know it sounds silly, but but Hotmail is it's kind of like my mom's um, AOL account. Okay, change to change to Gmail. Okay, and let me just double check here. If I click here, will it go to email? 
Let's see. Oh, yeah. Okay, good. It works. That was going to open up Microsoft Windows. We don't want to go there. VMware Fusion stuff. All right. Phone number. Um, I don't know where. The, I guess if you're in London, that makes sense. But if you're applying anywhere overseas, I don't know where that is. Okay, that's fine. Um, I would put London, England. And I know it sounds crazy, but I was born uh, in Canada in a town called London, Ontario. There's lots of Londons. Okay. All right. All right, education, experience. Yeah, I don't like that spill over there as well to, to the next page. So what you can do is get rid of this white space here so you can fit everything onto one page and use the, um, the Harvard Business School resume format. And it's one page. And the reason I mention that is a lot of people that are hiring our senior executives and they were trained with the HBS, or Harvard Business School resume format globally. Uh, and it, it looks like this. And you can actually go, if you want, to my uh, complete job course uh, and, and check it out. I think there's a template there, too. But let me let me actually see if I can find it here. Let's go to um, HBS resume format. Yeah, here it is here. OK, so I'll, I'll just click here on, on, on the images. So there, there's usually three sections in these things. Let me go here. No. Hold on a second. Give me one second, please. Thank you. All right. Anyway, it's got here, it's got section one, section two, section three. I know you can't see that, but there's, um, give me one second. Okay. Open image in new window. I'll make it big. I can download it, but it'll take a second. Here we go. All right. All right. Resolution sucks here. That's fine. Whatever. Uh, but the way it works here is he's, this person, he or she has um, work experience uh, education, and then personal down here. However, if they don't have much work experience, but they have a lot of education experience, you put education first. So you choose to lead with education or work experience, whatever is stronger suit for you. Okay. All right. Now let me just close this out and go back to your resume and continue to provide my humble thoughts. All right. So Summary, I, I, I don't recommend having this as well. Get right to the point within those three sections, okay? But I will read it. A positive and ambitious individual who is motivated to learn and has a desire for success, recently graduated in mathematics and finance at the University of Portsmouth, comma, uh, having a genuine interest in the financial markets, specifically the foreign exchange markets, as, as well as having some accounting experience, a quick and highly adaptable learner who enjoys teamwork, good, uh, but also excels uh, in, in individual tasks. That's fine. But look, if, for this stuff here, you put that in your LinkedIn profile in the summary section instead, not, not on the resume. All right, education. All right, so when, when you say this, that's great. That three point, I mean, round it up to 3.7, that's fine. Uh, but I don't know what 2.1 means. And, and I'm sure different schools are, are different ways, but this confuses me here. So less is more, always less is more. Okay. Bachelor. Okay. Units learned include. All right. Financial service price. Yeah. You can, you can condense this definitely into a lot less space. Achieved good understanding equity options. Yeah. Th this is too long. This is too long. All right. Then you've got here, um, mathematics, um, and, and 2.1. So, in a lot of countries, it, GPAs are out of 4.0, so 2.1 might might confuse people. Uh, and I know you might retort, retort, come back to me and say, oh, wait a second, Chris, I'm only applying in, in England, in London. Okay, does, is everybody that works at that company, uh, were they also educated in England? You know, maybe somebody from Canada or, or, or Pakistan, whatever, is, is, is deciding who's going to be hired or works in HR. So anyway, I would just kind of clarify that. Okay, and then there's here, you see how you have the year here on this line, but not the next line, just be, be consistent and open up the Harvard Business School format and, and you'll see as well. All right, let's go next to, uh, I talked about the spillover already. Um, and I would, yeah, 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 let's see here. Eating counter stuff. Okay, if, if this, if this resume is going is sent to somebody that you want to work for, 
Um, I would I would beef up the work experience part. Even if you don't have much work experience, that's okay. But I beef it up a little bit. Okay. Um, and I don't know what this is here, aiding counter staff, uh, or, or what that is there. And, and I know you, you might retort and say, well, you know, Chris in England, this everybody knows this. But just in case they don't, um, you might want to provide a little more details on what that is. Medical counter assistance. Okay, so the, okay, not sorry, actually. Okay, yeah, it's, it's all in present tense. That's good. If this was past tense, oh, here we go. So you've got to change this to be the same tense. If this says 2015 to now, then this should be nurture my leadership. Um, and then when it becomes the past, you say provided and all that stuff. Okay, and, and this is confusing. I, I don't know what that what that is there. HM ongoing. This has been a family run business. Here. I would list the years as well, even though it is it is a family company. And then maybe use past tense as well here. All right, skills. Yeah, and I don't I don't like this orphan here. I would kind of fit that in there. I'm just being very picky, sorry. Okay, and then consistency too, you, you did capital A here, lowercase u. And I know it sounds silly and trite, uh, but but people look at that stuff. Yeah, and, and I would I would uh, remove this because everybody knows that references are available upon, upon request. Um, and, and, and also like put something else in here too, like a personal set, like stuff you enjoy. You know, what are you passionate about? You know, football, um, uh, American soccer, whatever, baseball, cricket, I don't know. Put down other stuff as well. Travel, something interesting about you because a lot of times what happens is in these interviews, the interview, the interviewer wants to focus on, can I talk to this person? Can this person talk to my customers? Is this person social? What is this person all about? What do they enjoy doing? Okay. So, and it'll help you bond as well. And so for my Citadel interview, actually, Carson Levitt, who hired me there and at another hedge fund as well, he's been my mentor. He worked for George Soros, I talked about it in the past. Um, Carson went to the bottom of my, my resume and it said interests were baseball. And we started off talking about baseball for half an hour in that interview. And then we talked about stocks. And it was amazing because, I, I mean, I love baseball and he's from San Francisco originally from Toronto. And so I was able to name, you know, Willie McCovey, all these old great um, uh, baseball stars from San Francisco. We bonded anyway. So um, you have to put down your hobbies at the bottom because it'll help you from, from a bonding perspective. All right, let me now go back up into big mode Chris again. And then let's go to wherever that is there and then clear this. All right, great. Um, and then stay, I'm just going to, now, close the door because I'm getting cold. Hold on a second. All right, that's fine. Close it part of the way. All right, speaking of England, I did that for you, man. You see that, that egg building there? That's uh, the, the dude that developed or made the uh, Salesforce Tower in San Francisco also designed that. I think that's England. Correct me if I'm wrong. All right. Next question. Let's see here. Hold on one second. All right, Stephen, that's what I'm talking about. Stephen said, challenge accepted. Write a book uh, within 12 months. Oh, I love it, man. I love it. All right. Anybody else want to join the challenge with Stephen? Put it in writing here. Okay. Come on, Stephen. Good, good for you for being the, the innovator and uh, you got the first mover advantage here. Come on, write it down. Everybody write it down. Let's do it. I'm not moving on until I get at least three more people to write down they're going to do it within 12 months. Everybody, come on. Fujimori, have you done it yet? All right, I'd scroll down and check, but uh, I'd lose my spot here. All right, great. Good job, Steve. Okay, uh, Crypto is saying the book information is fantastic. Great, awesome. I'm going to write a book this year also. Awesome, Crypto. That's what I'm talking about. That's how we say a boot in Canada. It's not about Americans, okay? All right, Yash is saying, uh, hey, Chris, uh, I'm an average thinker. Um, dude, okay, I'm going to stop you right there. It's all up here. It's all up here. Whether or not you think you can do it, 
your right. Okay, and I want you all to write this down. And after this webcast, I want you to go to YouTube and I want you to search for three words. Four words. I'm, I'm, not, I'm not a smart thinker. Uh, Steve Jobs, smarter than you. Okay, so do a search for that uh, and, and watch that video. Because I promise you, uh, you'll get this, this awakening moment where you realize that all this stuff around you is created by people that are no smarter than you. So anyway, and, and once you change that, I'm not telling you to be arrogant, but once you really know, really know that you can compete with anybody, uh, then you'll, you'll never, ever, ever be the same and, and you'll be happier uh, and you'll be more productive and you'll follow your passion. Um, so anyway. Hey, Chris, um, I'm an ultimate procrastinator. Uh, I am slow and unmanaged. I work in complete comfort zone. How to change all this? Okay, okay. So here's what I want you to do. Um, and, and I'm going to go back into um, screen capture mode. And, and as always, this is going to be applicable to everybody. And I'm going to show you something that's going to change your life. Okay. Don't oversell, Chris. Just kidding. <laughs> so here's what I want you to do. The, the way that you can accomplish way, way more um, in, in your life is to actually go to write down a schedule every day. Stay with me. So, and I'm going to give you a template for this. Haroon Education Mentors schedule. That's how my Mrs. Sw Miss Swift, Mrs. Collins, she used to pronounce it that way. She's British. All right. Uh, she was my teacher. Click here, download the daily scheduling PowerPoint template. Okay. Here's what I want you to do. So before you go to bed every night, I want you to fill out this one pager and I'm giving it to you in PowerPoint format so that you can customize it. I'm sure you can get, you can use um, other software other than PowerPoint and this will automatically be opened up like in Keynote or whatever. Okay. And I'm going to show you how I do it and everybody is different. Okay. And so the first thing I wrote here is, you know, right click and delete this box uh, and just, you know, kind of use your, your, your own methodology because you're not all like me. Okay. And I respect everyone's differences. But here's what I want you to do. Let's just start at the top. So this is kind of an out of date one now, but I write down the four most important things to me in business, right? So it was my four goals for the year, whatever, to write certain courses, like complete cryptocurrency course, whatever. And then what I did is right here, I have check boxes. And so every month as a Udemy teacher, you're allowed to send out two promotional emails. Uh, and so I, I sent one out two days ago, I think. Um, and, and then here you're allowed to send out four educational messages to students. Um, yeah, I sent one per week, as you know, and you and me. And then here, this was, uh, to publish one LinkedIn article every day and one YouTube, uh, posting every day. Check, check. Okay. Then here I write the day number. Okay. Are we good? Yeah, we're good. And the reason I write the day number is because I try to challenge myself to see how many days in a row I could do this. Okay, and weekends don't count. You don't have to do this on weekends. So if I'm starting today, I would write day one, and the date is January 3rd, 2019. Okay. And then um, at the end, and that day, when, when, at the end of the day, I would also, you know, put check boxes in here if, if I did this stuff. You know, for me, and again, we're all different. You know, God is most importantly to me. They would say prayers. Um, family, diet, in that order. Uh, did I do weights? Um, I don't do that much weights, but it, it releases serotonin. It's a little bit. Um, did I put the customer first? Um, did I not surf the internet too much? Did I not check emails too many times? Did I get 20,000 steps in on my, uh, my, 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 my Fitbit, which you and I both know means 10,000 steps? Uh, and then this is just, I, I check my body fat where it was some cheap little machine made by a company called Omron. Did I wash my face twice a day? Uh, did, I, did I plan my meals? Did I get eight hours of sleep, which I write here? Uh, and this was a weight goal I wanted when I wanted to be cut. That's out of date now. Anyway. Then I write down here other to-dos I want to accomplish during the day. And I fill this all out by hand, by the way. I print it out and then I fill it out by hand. And it's important to do so and double-sided so you can you know, be good at the environment and stuff. But it's important to do it by hand because if you always write down your goals every day <laughs> and to-dos and whatnot, uh, then the likelihood of you achieving them goes up a lot. Okay. And for those of you that watched my, my, my New Year's message, which hit YouTube at midnight on January 1st, I talked about writing down deadline dates for your goals. And that's how you'll accomplish them. 
All right. So here uh, you write down other to do's for the day. And then you write down everything you're going to do that day. And because you mentioned procrastinating, um, I, I have to mention this to you. Um, please write down, like walk, like take time for yourself. Gym, go to the gym, the elliptical trainer. I love the elliptical trainer at the gym. And I do it with my iPad actually on it um, because what happens is you really serotonin. It's like a Prozac. Uh, and you're happier, and I can take in a lot more information when I'm doing that as well. So a lot of the emails I answer to customers, whatever, I'll, I'll do it at 4 p.m. Uh, in the in the afternoon, and, and Wrigley's awesome as well. Good help with that. And then I'll schedule uh, family and dinner time as well for four hours, which means it ends up being two hours, right? You know what I'm getting at. And then bedtime here, okay? Now, at the end of every day, at 9 p.m., my alarm goes off, and... 9 p.m. means every day for me that I have to do two things. Number one, write tomorrow's schedule and score myself for today. And it's harsh, I know. Um, and so what I do is this. I go through here um, and, and I go top down, see if I didn't get stuff done. So if I didn't, if I didn't do this, I take 20% off. Uh, if I didn't enough, spend enough time with family, I, I take 10% off. Uh, diet, 5%, that sort of thing. We're all, we're all different, okay? And then if I didn't get stuff done during certain hours and I wrote it down, I'd take 5% off for each violation. <laughs> um, anyway, and then I'll score myself. And I think I've gotten 95% as my highest. Um, but but it really, I don't know, man. It, it kind of, it helps you be more disciplined and, and get more stuff done. And again, we're all different. So don't don't feel like I'm forcing stuff at you. you do, do, do it whatever way you want to. All right, let me go back. Give me one second. Uh, buh, 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 buh. I've been trying to shake this coal. I've, I've had it for ages, man. All right. I'm going to close the door again. I don't want to stay sicker. All right. All right. All right. And, and actually, I've started um, Fosier Care. Um, so I, I'm trying to, because I'm so crazy busy, uh, and, and I don't like hiring too many people. I like it just to be really myself, maybe one or two others. Um, what I've done is I, I've started, I've kind of thought of it this way. Like instead of hiring another person, I'm I'm going to pay more for my food because that, that takes like an hour per day for me. And so what I do is I, I now, I, I subscribed actually on, on Amazon uh, to, um, and this is crazy, but this is made by 7-Eleven. This is cold pressed organic juice. I'm an idiot. It's green. So the green screen is going to kind of knock it out. Um, but uh, I order seven of these a week. Uh, it's like 20 something dollars. Uh, and it's got everything you need. And it's low in sugar as well. There's different flavors. So 7-Eleven, who, who would have thought? So the brand name, if you're curious, is 7-Select. Um, and, and I also have been ordering food. So it comes, an organic company brings it. And, and I thought to myself, well, rather than hiring somebody else, why don't I just get my food to lip, that sort of thing. Anyway, so... I only mention that because I'm trying to I'm trying to shake this cold, and I, and I still take my daily vitamins every day, right? Like I've got a calcium and all, all my good stuff. And anyway, who knows, man? All right, uh, next up, let's see here. Um, so Yash, I hope that that answered your your uh, your, your 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 question, okay? About uh, about your your um, about procrastinating and you're not slow. Okay. Whatever you tell yourself up here, and this goes to everybody. I'm very serious about this. Your perception becomes reality and nobody's smarter than you. So watch that Steve Jobs video. Nobody is smarter than you. Please, please, Yash. Um, and um, I, I want you to run to your fears. Okay? And I want you to watch a vlog I made called Run to Your Fears. And I want you to challenge yourself I want you to push yourself. I used to be terrified of public speaking. And so I used to force myself to go into the prison system um, through my church uh, and give speeches, which scare the crap out of me. But you know what? I, I can I can do it now. And, and I love it. I turn my biggest weakness, my biggest paranoia, my biggest fear into my biggest passion. I, I love this. I love this. So Yash, I want you to run to your fears, whatever they are. I want you to run to your fears and your weaknesses because I promise you, other people in business and life think they have the same weaknesses and fears as you do. And if you master them, then you'll make it to the top. Okay. 
Uh, and then Yash, please provide me with with a follow up because I I, I I I care and I didn't and I don't mean to be critical, uh, but I just don't I don't like the way you started this question. And, and I'm I'm so grateful you're on this call and please come every week, please please please. Uh, but 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 I, from a I, I want you to tell yourself that nobody is smarter than you and. Um, the most important thing uh, a teacher or a parent can provide children or students is, is a sense of confidence. Um, so anyway, uh, if, if you want to do um, a one-on-one, I don't do this often, but reach out to me, please. Thank you. All right. Okay, so next one is, Chris, what do you think about Apple's uh, recent plunge? Well, I know that uh, they, 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 they cut guidance. I saw that through a breaking news uh, uh, Wall Street Journal email I got. Um, I mean, look, I, I've, I've been a little bit like, upset with, with Apple over the past year or two. I love their products, but they haven't done anything innovative since the founder, Steve Jobs, unfortunately passed away. I mean, they've made um, a cheaper version of this, a bigger version of this, a bigger iPad, a smaller iPad. They made the Apple TV box a little bit bigger. Um... You know, they, 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 they created Apple Watch, which has been a disaster. And there's a reason why they don't tell us how many units have shipped. Um, so I don't know. I, I, I love Apple. I love the product. The company is only as good as, it, as its customer service. The Genius Bar is a great idea. I'm just not that bullish anymore because everybody owns it too. You know, and I ask myself five years from now, will Apple be more relevant or less relevant than they are today? I think less relevant. So that, that, that's just me. I'm not telling you to short it. Uh, but that's just my, my, my humble opinion. And, and, and I know that it's, I, I'm probably pissed off a couple of people by saying that. Um, it, and I know that everybody in the media is always bullish on, on Apple and, and I love it. I'm just an independent thinker and I don't know. And, and, and Avi Pro, you'll, you'll love this. Um, you know, anybody that uses Android, I, I get it now. I get why you're so upset with, with Apple for releasing stuff that Android's already done a year or two earlier. That wasn't always the case, but anyway, so, but I do love this. The halo effect has got me. I use Mac products. I'm sticking with Mac products. And I wish that Apple made a, a video camera, like a big video camera, because all this ISO F-stop crap, I don't get it. Okay. All right, let's move on. <laughs> Thanks, Wrigley. Dante, you're here. How are you, man? Dante, uh, Dante, are you in Ottawa or Montreal? I, I can't remember. Just let me know. I'm, I'm curious. Um, good morning, Chris. Do you think any company which sells hardware and eventually depreciate in value like, like Apple? So I, I think that for those of you starting companies, uh, and, and please take my complete business plan course, right? Um, it, it's only 10 bucks, whatever, and you can get your money back if you don't like it. But I say it because it'll help you understand what kind of company to start from scratch. And I always advise that people don't start hardware companies. And there's a reason why there hasn't been that many IPOs over the past decade for hardware companies. Because hardware means production. Production means inventory. Too much inventory destroys a company. Okay, and we've talked about that before. So um, I'm not a big fan of, of startups that are only hardware focused. I like software and services-based stuff because you write once, read many. The, the, the database people out there get that. Um, and so, like, for example, teaching. You, you put a course online on Udemy, and, you know, it, it's, it's infinitely scalable. It can reach the whole world. That's how I want you to think of business models. And I think everybody has some Yash. Yash, and for everybody on this call, everyone's got something to teach. Everybody. I promise you. So what I want you to do is I want all of you to teach on, on Udemy, um, and I'm, I'm not a, I mean, I get nothing for saying this, uh, but I, I want to show you how to, how to do it. Okay. Uh, there, there's a couple courses I, I want you all to take and they're free. Here it is here. All right, good. So just go to my, 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 my profile page, um, or just search you me, whatever. And there's a course I make every year and it, it teaches you, here it is here. It's called, um, 40 tips on how to make a great online course. And it's based on 40 mistakes I've made over the past year teaching online. So you can work smarter, not harder. It's free. This one here is, I think it's like five hours. Um, and before you do that one, you can watch the previous one I made, which is called 40 Tips. 
And that one, and I did it in every language. So here it is here, 40 tips. And this one's an hour and a half and they're free. And I did it in every single language I could find as well. Um, Cause I, I think education can, can change the world. Italy, why you do that to me? This is free. Just kidding. All right. So anyway, that, that's what I recommend doing. And, and for those of you that want an amazing side hustle, I, I think that teaching is the answer. You know, when, when one teaches to learn, there's no better feeling than, than helping somebody. Okay, great. Let's see what's next here. Okay, so uh, uh, Dante is saying, um, I, we're good. All right, Dante is saying, um, I, I, I watched a talk by Gary V in London yesterday. It's Gary Vaynerchuk. And he discussed the value of attention in our society. Do you think companies create addictive product instead of creating real values to customers? It's interesting. I, I think if you focus on serving other people and enhancing their lives as what you do business-wise, um, then everything else will fall into place. Everything else will fall into place. Like don't, you know, when I, when I see the word creating addictive products, it, it makes me think of, um, uh, of, of, of nicotine um, or, or, or drugs. Um, and I, I disagree with this whole free drugs movement, but I'm the only one to say it, whatever. Um, or, or, or alcohol. You know, I, I, I don't I, I think if you make products that you really think will enhance people's lives uh, and you don't think about addiction uh, in that sense, but really, really help people, then you'll be successful. You know, like, like Mark Benioff, like from, uh, from Salesforce.com. I mean, he, he created um, an amazing company, but he did it because he loves software and he wants to help people, help people save money using his software products, for example, that, that sort of thing. Okay, so next up, um, Dante is, what kind of interns does a company like Renaissance Technology hire? Do they, they only hire math or computer science majors? I mean, I, I, I don't know. Uh, but um, I, I would assume they, they hire a bunch from Berkeley because they, they have an office up by Berkeley as well. Um, but, I, but I think whoever is, is the most proactive in networking are the ones that get internships. Right? And there's this, uh, there's this guy uh, that uh, he interned with us at my, my Prius Venture Capital firm. Uh, he's uh, he's, he's from, uh, from, from Berkeley only because he kept calling and calling and calling. He's like, okay, come on in. Great guy. Um, really passive. He's from Greece. He had a uh, visa issues, but he got all solved. Thank God. Thank you, God. Um, but um, no, he was just uh, persistent. He was persistent. So anyway. All right. Next up. Um, blah, blah, blah. And he's now working at Google. He's done great for himself. Great guy. Okay. Next up I've got is, have I read uh, The Richest Man in, in Babylon? I, I have not. I have not. Uh, but I, I was down and out years ago and I read the book of Job and that put everything into context and I'm happy the way things have turned out now. Okay. But tell me what, what that book is about though, please, um, um, if you can, Dante. All right. Uh, Arun saying every book by, by Sir Richard Branson is a good read. I agree. I agree. And the, the guy doesn't even, he doesn't even, he dropped out of high school. It's amazing. Amazing. You don't need a fancy college degree to be incredibly successful. I really believe my kids are the last generation that feels like they have to go to university. Okay. Next up is Dante. How do you sell yourself uh, uh, as, as a brand? Well, first of all, you have to be incredibly good looking and look like Brad Pitt here. Okay. And we, we all know that Bradley Pitts. Okay. That's the first one. I'm just kidding. Sell yourself as a brand. Um, I, I think one way is, is social media and, and it's free. Write that book. Dante, I haven't scrolled down. I haven't seen your name down there, but I haven't scrolled down yet. I hope your name is one of them, right? And Fujimori, son, you too. <laughs> um, but just leverage social media. Um, right now, we're, the reason I'm making a, a YouTube course, it's called a complete YouTube course, uh, with, with Sasha Stevenson. Um, she's amazing, dude. I mean, she's got like 75 million views now. But the reason I'm making that course is because I think that this is a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity. And I'm YouTubing because I enjoy it because I promised everybody I would do it for the next 10 years every day. I'm on day 158 now. Maybe that's why I'm sick. But we're going to look back on YouTube 
And we're going to say that this was a once in a lifetime opportunity, a once in a lifetime opportunity, because YouTube is the only gold rush in history, the only gold rush where it costs you nothing to get online, to compete, to create the product, right? Everyone's got a cell phone already. And you can reach every customer on the planet. Think about it. No other gold rush in history. Cryptocurrency, you had to buy cryptos that could go down a lot. <laughs> Most of them are a scam. Or you had to create mining equipment, which I've done. Um, you know, with, with, with the gold rush in San Francisco in 1849, um, you had to buy the pixels, the axles, the shovels. You had to move to California. This is the only gold rush in history where it costs you nothing to get online. Because what's going to happen is this. Every video, and you, I promise you, we're all going to look back on this 10, 20 years from now and say, what was I thinking, man? I should have created content. What happens is every video you create, um, it, it helps people if you want. But also think of it as a little franchise. So they're all little franchises, like owning a lot of McDonald's or Subways. And each one of these franchises, meaning one of your videos, eventually it grows, grows and grows and grows, and it becomes the authority on that topic one day for some people. And then if you want, you can turn on ads. I don't turn on ads. I don't make money from anything I mention on, 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 you know, on, on YouTube, like the, the tech products. But eventually it grows. If you build it, they will come. It's like Field of Dreams. So, Dante, I think that you and everybody should start using uh, YouTube. And, you know, if, if you don't want to, if you think it's such a pain in the ass doing all of this, this social media stuff, I want to show you a tool that, that I just started using um, and, and Wrigley, um, hopefully Wrigley's not, not signed into this. I don't think he is. It's called Hootsuite and it helps you manage everything in one place. So let's, let's go there together. Can I get a Hoot? Hootsuite. Oh, for crying out loud, I have to log in now. Okay, nobody look at that password, good. <laughs> and what you can do is you, you can actually schedule stuff. So today at uh, 11 a.m., uh, you're gonna see, looks like Wrigley did that one there. Sorry, really, I just cleared that. So today you're going to see that um, I've got scheduled this one in 45 minutes, okay? And, and that's automatically going to be posted. Um, and I'm really proud of this one here. And so that's LinkedIn. It's also going to be posted to my Facebook channel. Um, and then it'll also be posted to Twitter, All right? So so here they are here. And this is um, nice, dude. That's Wrigley. If you want to, yeah, Wrigley put that stuff there. Very cool. And that's the one I did yesterday, right? Which Which I'm really proud of how to deal with jerks at work. So if social media is really overwhelming for you, you can get Hootsuite and you can get a free account. I pay for it because I use a lot of it, but you can you can post all this stuff for the week in advance, okay? And, and Dante, I know you're really up to, to speed with this stuff because uh, you're, you're, you're into Shopify as well. Um, but anyway, I, I would just, if, if, it, if, it, if it really um, intimidates you, all this social media stuff, then use Hootsuite. Okay, and Wrigley, um, Wrigley uses another one as well. Wrigley, what's the free one you use? Just, just post it so other people know as well, please. Thanks. All right, I'm in a New York state of mind. So anyway, everybody should should YouTube. Everyone should use social media as well. Uh, and then I'll be able to humbly help you with, with YouTube. Uh, give me a couple of months, okay? All right, thanks. All right. Um, all right, next up. And, and, and I want you all to be thought of as thought leaders. So when you write LinkedIn articles, I want you to own whatever you're writing about, okay? Um, be a thought leader. How does someone become a thought leader? Because they tell themselves they're a thought leader. Okay. All right. And Yash, I want to see yours up there too, dude. Thanks. All right. And I don't know what that book is, Crossing the, 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 the Chasm uh, by Jeffrey Moore. But if you want, you can summarize it for me here. Thank you, though. I'm so behind on my books, man. So sorry. I should be reading more. What do you say when someone asks you, why are you passionate about finance? Well, you want to say, because I want to make a lot of money. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> um, just say that you, you, you enjoy, um, I'm trying to think about this. this. This is hard. This is hard for me because I did this for half my life. And obviously the money side is, is not going to help because you're constantly learning. It's the only industry in the world where information changes constantly and you're always, always learning. Information changes drastically and you have to react to new 
macro and microeconomic uh, uh, news flow or news items. You're always learning. You're always learning. And I find that if you work in, in an industry where you're always learning, you'll never get bored, which means you're always happy. So I, w- I would say that. All right. Uh, or whatever, Kardec, the, the real reason is for you. All right, Sayed, I got, um, I, I really love to be a cost specialist, but I don't know where do I start and if there's a future for that job, what do you recommend I should do? I, I don't know what that means, cost specialist. Please um, let, me, let me know what a cost specialist is and then I'll, I'll humbly answer the question. Thanks. All right, Arun, what are some good resources to learn and study more about international finance markets? So I, I think a great way to go, and, and I show this uh, on a previous webcast, is uh, the Financial Times. Okay, and and I'm going to show you again. We're going to go this together through this together, and and this will be really helpful for all of you. And, and you'll 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 see why in a second. Okay, so I've got New York on the bottom there too. So the, the Financial Times is amazing. So Financial Times is is um, it's kind of like the Wall Street Journal for England or Europe or the world, I should say. It's more global. It's like the BBC. I accept something I didn't read. Okay, so what I would do here is um, when you want to learn more about international finance and markets, go through here and whenever you see a headline on an article that's not editorial based, I want you to read it because this will explain how the world works. And you can do the same with the Wall Street Journal as well. Okay, and I know somebody's going to say, I don't have access to this though, Chris. So say, let's, let's just find something here. So flash crash moves hit currencies as yen surges. Okay, so this is an international finance uh, article, okay? And you want to read it, it's like, oh, I can't. I have to pay for it. No, you don't. I'll show you why. So what you do is you copy the article, and this works for a lot of websites. And then what you do is you go to Google or Bing if you work at Microsoft. Sorry. All right. Uh, And then what you do is here's the article here. You click it, and it works. Ah, Pretty cool, huh? Uh, and, and the reason why this works for many websites is because of SEO or search engine optimization. If the Financial Times, who will never sponsor me now ever, I know, sorry, sort of. If, if the Financial Times didn't allow that to be indexed in Google, then what would happen is they wouldn't show up in search rankings or not as high. So you can do what I did, okay? So you copy the, the heading, okay? But what you do is you can learn how the world works by reading macroeconomic articles like this. If you're curious as to how interest rates work, um, you can watch a vlog I made on that that topic uh, called uh, the, the Idiot's Guide to Interest Rates as Explained by an Idiot. And I really did look like an idiot in that. I wore a wig and glass, my nerd glasses and stuff. So that's what I recommend doing, okay? Uh, and just to understand how, how the world works. Uh, and then you can also study uh, economic history, not the boring supply demand crap, crap, but just you can get uh, uh, history books. Um, you know, for example, why did Asia crash or fall uh, in the late 90s? There's a lot of great books on that that, I, that I've read as well. Um, anyway, so hopefully that answers your, your, your question. All right, so let me clear this layer. Go back to bigger Chris. We're still in New York, right? All right, cool. I used to work actually in a building right beside this one on West 57th Street at Kingdom Capital. We were at 7th and 57th Street, and we had a beautiful view of the park like that. It was neat. All right, let's go back. More questions here, Chris. All right, so Joe's asking for, or saying, thanks for answer on private wealth management. I've been looking uh, for a structured program for entry into the industry, but most of what I have seen looks looks like purely sales rather than structured advisory. Yeah, so private wealth management is sales, right? Uh, and, and the way it works is when you're managing money for other people um, on your team, if you work in, in PWM or private wealth management, you have experts, okay? Not just other employees that work on your team, but analysts that work for the bank, okay? Uh, like, like strategists, et cetera. Um, but, but I would say that, you know, focus on, on getting sales experience um, and then just network a lot. And you'll learn on the job. Don't worry. Don't worry. Okay. Um, okay. All right. Oh, I see. So NK, uh, it's our grading system in the UK. Okay. Thanks. Thanks for that feedback there. Appreciate it. And, and that was just with respect to the resume. I gave feedback on recently. Okay. All right. Next one. Um, Cassandra, that's not your, your real name. I, you must have changed it, right? 
All right. So uh, I, I think this is, this is the same Cassandra from Florida, right? Because I think you had a different username before. Happy New Year, Chris. I missed you. I missed you too. Um, uh, I like your funny and wise comments. Thank you. Laugh at me, not, not with me. Uh, I'm super busy because I moved to the enterprise architecture team and I need to, le uh, to le uh, leave, wow, a mountain of docs for my, for my app team. Wow. Wow. Well, it's, it's good to have you back. Thank you. All right. So um, next up, uh, Kardik. Good. See, Kardik is going to make write a book as well. Cassandra, if you're just joining us, everybody in this call has committed to writing a book and they put it in writing. So Cassandra, you got to write your name down there too, okay? Come on. And you can make it like that that thing your dad your, your dad talked about years ago, environmental credits, right? You you can you can write that a book about that. All right. So everyone's got to put down their 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 Come on, man. I I'm I'm going through the the, the effort of delivering this this call to you all. I, I paid for all this equipment, and the only thing I ask in return is that you all write a book because I promise you it'll it'll help you tremendously. All right. All right, so Arun's saying, how can I use the HTTPS format to my advantage since I don't have any work experience? Thanks. Um, so what you'll do, Arun, is you'll, you'll lead with education. And then with work experience, you had to have done something part-time wise. And you can write that down. There has to be something. Or maybe when you were in, in school, you were members of certain clubs. You can kind of sort of have that as work experience. Okay. All right. All um, right. All right. So um, next question um, I, I've got is um, uh, Zachary. Uh, Hi, can you recommend some must watch movies for, for entrepreneurs? Sure, Zach. And I asked Zach uh, about a month ago, can I call you Zach? He said yes. Um, so yeah, the, the best, um, I, I like this movie called Tucker, uh, which is about a man and his dreams. Uh, it was made by Francis Ford Coppola, the, the Godfather guy. Rohit would like that reference. Um, so I, I would check that out because it, it shows somebody with an amazing attitude and, and how if, if you dream it and, and believe it, you can achieve it. I'm so sorry I'm doing this, but regularly we'll use this for, for the weekly one. Okay. Yeah. Dream it, believe it, achieve, achieve it. All right. My cheesy smile is done. That's just for the cover photo. All right. Um, so yeah, I would watch Tucker, uh, A Man in His Dreams. Um, I would watch The Founder, which is, uh, Michael Keaton did a great job of, of being a jerk, <laughs> uh, playing Ray Kroc with McDonald's. Um, I don't know, in, in, I, I can't really think of any, any others. Um, in order to understand financial markets, watch the movie Too Big to Fail. It's an HBO movie you can get on YouTube for a couple of bucks, I think. Um, and, and those are the ones that really come to mind. If, if you want to learn uh, about insider trading and, and how to stay out of jail, if you're going to work in finance, uh, and this goes for everybody, whether you're doing PWM or banking, then watch the movie Wall Street. Um, and then you can also watch um, uh, OPM or Other People's Money to understand how private equity works. Um, that, that's a good one as well with, with Danny DeVito. I'm dating myself there. All right. Um, uh, Calipita is saying, is the next summer I'll be in, in the USA uh, to Camp America program. Is it possible to meet you? Sure. Yeah, come on out here. Uh, and then what we'll do is um, we'll, we'll do one of these sessions live and, and I'll get a ton of people together. Uh, and then we'll, we'll all meet up together. Maybe we'll get a hotel or something and book a conference room. It'll, it'll be fun or just an event. Um, yeah. Okay. Let's see. Next up. Um, and when there's no more questions, I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to wrap up the call. Um, let's see here. Hold on. Let me just maximize this. All right. Hold on. Hold on a second. And if this is helpful, just click the like button if everyone likes it here. Give me one second, please. Sorry. I'm trying to see if here is more questions. Do I know people from, uh, from Poland? Um, I, I don't, but, um, I had a really nice comment from somebody from Poland, uh, on, on my vlog the other day, or uh, my vlog might, might've been you. Thank you. If, if so, I don't, I knew a guy, Edward, I can't remember his last name. I went to, to business school with him. Um, but let me just say that, uh, Lech Walesa is one of my heroes. Um, it's amazing what, what he did and how he and Ronald Reagan came together and kind of defeat communism from that angle. And anyway, they got to make a movie about Lech Walesa. He's amazing. Okay, and Wrigley is saying that Buffer.com is a Hootsuite alternative. Thanks for that. 
Kevin is writing a book. Excellent. Good. Wrigley is writing a book. Excellent. Um, and then, uh, hold on a second. Sai is saying, Happy New Year, Chris. I am transitioning into M&A advisory. Which course or book do you think is best to learn about M&A? So I have a course called the Complete Financial Analyst Training and Investing Course. That's what I'd recommend taking. Uh, and also read the Financial Times whenever there's a, an article about a new M&A event or IPO for that matter. Okay. And, and obviously I like, I don't like theory. I like real practical stuff, which is what I teach in my courses. And that's why I recommend reading the, the FT as well. The non-editorial articles, of course, unless the Lex column is there. Okay. Let's see what else we got here. All right, Cassandra. Yay. Yes, it is me. Cassandra from Florida. I can barely write tech, uh, tech docs. A book? <laughs> I love it. On caps. That is so crazy. Maybe if I get a, a little man following me and taking notes <laughs> like the Romans. Good. So I'll take that as yes, you're doing it. Good. Yes, it is me. But yes, for the book as well. I know I'm, twist, I'm twisting words there. But good. Okay. You're going to write a book. Good. Okay. Um, all right. I've got a question uh, saying, what is the hidden side of the economy? So they call it like the, the dark web, like stuff you can buy and sell online. There, there was Silk Road, which was an exchange here. Um, that uh, got taken down, um, that transacted in cryptocurrencies. Um, so that, that's a hidden side of the economy. The also hidden side is is if you hire people that, that are not citizens or, or can't work, whatever, uh, or if you pay for stuff in cash. And what a lot of people do also is they go to, um, to Chinatown here in San Francisco. Don't do this, but I'm going to tell you. And what they do is they buy gold, like real gold bars. Um, with, with They pay currency for it, so it's not traced. Then when gold goes up a lot, they then take it back and they sell it. Uh, and then they, um, they don't pay tax, which is illegal. It's fraud. You can go to jail for that. Um, but that's part of the hidden uh, economy as, as well. Um, all right, next up, um, I'm after a bachelor's degree, but thinking about a master's. Actually, I finished automatics and robotics, but also interested in finances. What's better, looking for a job and earn money or improve my education? Why not do both at the same time? So... If, if um, education wise, I, I think you could take, it seems like you're, you already have degrees, so um, you don't need to go back to school. If you want, you could take courses online, like go to Udemy or, or masterclass.com or, or other great online resources and learn those, um, learn those skills that way, especially programming, because uh, things change quickly in, in, in the coding world and, and universities are usually a decade behind, even in comp sci departments. So I would uh, retool and reskill online. Uh, and then um, uh, when it comes to, um, to, to work, um, you get a part-time job working for somebody else and always start companies on the side. Always, 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 please, please. And please fail 10 times in a row because the 11th time, that's when you become a billionaire or whatever and become very successful. Just don't be afraid of risk or failure. Oh, cool. So what's this here? Wrigley's saying the partner moved to Morgan Stanley and hired my buddy and his former junior partner within three months. He's now managing his own book of business at JP Morgan after a few years. Oh, that's cool, man. All right, cool. Um, all right, great. Um, Yash, this is a, okay. There's no more questions. So I'm going to end the call right now. Yash, thanks for that. Um, yeah, no problem at all. Um, Yash, I'm going to, um, and I, I never do this, but I'm going to reach out to you after this call is over and then we'll, we'll set something up. Okay. Um, but I want to, I want to thank you all for your time. Uh, if this was helpful, click the like button, please. Uh, and, uh, and, and subscribe to, to my channel. Uh, I hope you all have a, a wonderful week. Uh, God bless. And, um, if you watch my vlogs, I will see you manana. Or if you only watch this, this weekly, uh, call, uh, I will see you next week. Thanks again.